Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. I am so glad that everyone could join us this evening. Today I have uh, with me a surprise that I'm going to save until the end here, once I do the introductions. Uh, we have a special guest tonight, and I was very glad uh, to add this person uh, for this evening. Uh, we're going to talk about something very interesting I think you all will enjoy. But first, I'm going to introduce Brother Ben, who is our producer tonight. I want to thank Brother Ben in advance for all his hard work and effort. I'm surprised that he's able to do all of this and and then still um, give us such wonderful insight. It doesn't distract him. I think that's amazing. So that's wonderful. Brother Ben, would you like to say hello to everyone this evening? Hello, everyone. It's good to be here. Um, I'm very much looking forward to the conversations. We always get, I never know where we're going to go, but we always, I always learn a lot from you guys. And I just love, uh, you know, the fellowshipping with you. And um, yeah, I mean, anything I do on behind the scenes, that means absolutely a labor of love. Uh, I would be, it would be uh, torture if I wasn't able to do it. <laughs> so um, I, it's a, absolutely a pleasure of mine. So good to be here. Yeah. That's so awesome. I'm so glad that he feels that way because I didn't want to put any extra encumbrance or burden on anyone. And I'm glad that Brother Ben just thoroughly enjoys being with us on Saturday nights. Also tonight, I have with me a return guest, Sister Angel Martin. Sister Angel, would you like to say hello to everyone? Hey, everybody. Um, good to be back. And uh, yeah, I just want to use my intro to thank Ben for what he does because um, he really is producing a lot of shows for people and he, uh, you know, he has a family and a job, like we said the other night. And so um, it really is just, it's, it's so gracious of him to do this for everybody, for all of us, the computer illiterate <laughs> troglodytes. So uh, thank you, Ben. I appreciate it. Yes, we do. Thank you so much. And now drum roll. I should have had Ben get, get one ready. <laughs> drum roll for our special guest tonight. Uh, we have brother uh jason cripps who joins us on friday nights with uh church of the eternally secure fellowship friday fun fellowship fridays i left off the f hi brother cripps you want to introduce yourself to everyone yeah you kind of did but i'm uh, i'm happy to be here and i've been listening to the broadcast and i was uh telling lisa uh last night after the after the uh fellowship that um, I, I love these conversations and I, I there's one the, I didn't listen to the first show yet, but I've listened to the other ones and I just put it on in the background and listen to it. And it's uh, I like the topics that are chosen and it's fascinating. And um, I, I, I thought I, I told Sister Lisa that I had thought about uh, starting a, a separate channel or maybe a, a subset of, of my own channel. I haven't done anything on it in a long time, but. Uh, talking about these types of subjects, like some of the topics you guys have talked about, uh, which relate the Lord to some kind of uh, supernatural things uh, and things from Scripture. Um, so I'm excited to be here. Thank you for letting me invite myself, and <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I'm excited to see what happens in talking to you guys. I'm glad you're here, Jason. I, I was thinking that you would be somebody that would be good uh, in these conversations too, because you like to riff on things and talk about current events and stuff too. So absolutely, uh, I'm yeah, you're a good fit. Mm, thank you, Angel. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought you're so also known as the voice. The voice. That's it. The the voice. Velvet voice. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Praise God. That's awesome. <laughs> well, just so anyone who is joining us tonight on Late Night with Lisa and Friends, and you've never joined us before, just to give you an idea about the format. The concept of the broadcast is just fellow believers in the Lord Jesus Christ coming together and having a conversation, relaxing, you know, like maybe sitting by the fire, having coffee or tea or whatever relaxes you, and just talking about maybe current events or things that come to mind. We're not saying that any of the things we discussed tonight are necessarily written in stone, except for when we point to scripture or the things that we glean from scripture. So please, we don't want anybody to lose their religion because we're going to be thinking outside the box tonight on some things mm -hmm. and considering things uh, and maybe even doing something that uh, I don't see a whole lot of that does concern me in, the, in these latter days, which is exercising discernment 
on some matters. So we're going to talk about a number of different things tonight. But I think since Brother Cripps is our guest this evening, we're going to let Brother Cripps tell us what topic he picked for this evening to discuss. Brother Cripps? Oh, great. So um, I wanted to talk about the Mark of the Beast. There's a lot of stuff going on right now, and they uh, YouTube's actually flagging channels that say certain words. So I won't say, I'll just call what's going on the situation. So mm -hmm. during the situation, a lot of people are thinking about end time stuff. Uh, and I think it's a good thing in some ways. I think a lot of people are thinking about uh, biblical stuff uh, a little bit more, uh, especially since we, we can't congregate in churches. If that's what people do, uh, the, it, their, their minds are more on uh, futuristic things, uh, at least that have been set up as futuristic things. And the, the thinking that it might actually be closer than we think. Um, I agree with that. I think we are the last generation. I think that uh, I may live long enough to to see uh, some of the stuff uh, take place. And with the situation that we're in, um, I feel like they're uh, setting things up. I don't think it's uh, right around the corner necessarily, but I think they're staging uh, things to get it set up uh, to to have the mark of the beast. Uh, and in that same vein, I'm hearing a, a lot of uh, what I would consider people that follow the truth. And um, that that means a lot of different topics that not everyone is aware of. But one of those things is, is the mark. And I hear a lot of fear of people worried about their elderly uh, loved ones uh, have Alzheimer's or worried that uh, the mark will be mandatory in some way. And I want to get into that with you with, with you guys a little bit and talk about uh, what we think that, uh, if there's any truth to that and, and what the mark of the beast is, not necessarily what form it's going to take. Um, there are some mm -hmm. things that are laid out in scripture and some people have some crazy theories that it's it's not even a mark. It's the it's it's simply uh, accepting money from the government when it's offered and, then, and that's it. Um, so I just want to uh, see what you guys think about some of this stuff. Well, Brother Cripps, I'm going to say something. I, I think that's very interesting because I remember when I still don't know how I know all this stuff. I'm not old enough to know all this stuff. But I remember when debit cards first came out, the people, <laughs> people were losing their minds saying that that was the mark of the beast. I don't mm -hmm. know if y'all recall that, but especially – uh, when they first came out uh, with the magnetic strip and the whole thing, yeah. there's an, oh, this is the mark of the beast because yep. of the ones and zeros and mm -hmm. the code in it and everything. And would, I know you probably, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I just wanted to add to what you're saying. They would even count the numbers on some of the, uh, some of the codes and seeing what they added up to. Right. Yeah. And then, and then you remember the book, uh, 88 reasons Jesus will come back in 1988. Yes, I do remember. Okay. I and do. here we are. What is this? Is this, did I do my math right? Is this 32 years later? <laughs> uh, 88 to 2020. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. and he had 88 reasons that Jesus should have came back in 1988, mm -hmm. but here yeah. we are 32 years later. And at that time we had wars and rumors of wars, mm -hmm. nation rising against nation and kingdom against kingdom, just like the Bible says, and just like we see right now. And yet here we are 32 years later. Now, what's interesting is the only one who can put this thing on pause is the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't care what they want to do or mm -hmm. what they plan to do. If the Lord said not yet, yep. then it ain't going to be yet. So it's, it's very interesting. Uh, I've heard different preachers hold this particular theory that they've always had throughout history since the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and Antichrist waiting in the wings mm -hmm. because they did not know the day or the hour right. when the church would be removed. Right. So um, I wonder was, what you think about that and how that might even tie in with the mark of the beast. Um, I, I okay. First of all, you're absolutely right. What Scripture says is that we don't know the uh, the day or the hour. However, there are plenty of signs that are talked about in Scripture that can give us an approximation of uh, when this stuff is going to take place. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we know that uh, you know Jesus describes the birth birth pains. You know, and that's some of the things you mentioned: wars and rumors of wars and things like that. 
Uh, so we know when we start seeing these things actually take place, uh, we know that it's close. Uh, and I, I like to tell people, and this is the way I feel, if you're, if you're keeping your eyes on Christ, you don't have to worry about this, this thing at all. Uh, if you're keeping your eyes on Christ and, and you're uh, reading scripture and, and you see these signs take place, you know that your time here is short and you're close to our Lord and Savior Jesus coming back to get you. Uh, so there's no reason there's no reason to fear and even if even if you are i mean uh there there's some things in scripture about you know us possibly being arrested and and we may some of us may even lose our heads for christ mm -hmm. but absent in the body present with the lord mm -hmm. and i believe there's even a crown for that i mean not that the crown is what we're going for because I, I you know we're going to throw all our crowns at jesus feet anyway right um, but it's nothing to fear um, he's got us. Uh, mm -hmm. So when, in, in terms of the mark of the beast, and I hear uh, uh, people that, are, that I believe are believers mm -hmm. that are worried about this thing, worried about the mark and what it's, uh, what it's going to come out as and how they're going to, and the, and the fact that, uh, or not the fact, but they think that it'll somehow uh, be mandatory. And, and I'll tie that into the situation. Um, I do believe that there's going to be a mandatory vaccination eventually. Mm. Um, and some people think that the mark of the beast is somehow wrapped up into the, the vaccination itself. Uh, that may be, and they can say it's a mandatory vaccination and some people may fall for that. Oh, they're, they're expecting us to get it. Um, I don't know any believer that if the mark of the beast was somehow tied into the, into the vaccination that would take it. Hmm. Right. What, what about yeah. you, Lisa? Would you, uh, okay. If, first of all, let me ask this question in the situation we're in, if there was a mandatory vaccination, would you personally be willing to be forced into taking it? What the, that you said a whole lot. Here. <laughs> uh, mandatory vaccination. Would I be, I, you know, I am, I've still yet to wear a mask. So okay. I'm going to have yeah. to say no. <laughs> well, I'm cheating. Um, I'm cheating a little bit here, Lisa, because you and I already discussed this a little bit, not the mark, but the, the wearing of masks and things like that. Mm -hmm. You are not complying with mm -mm. the situation. No, not uh, not at all. In yeah. fact, if I was forced to wear a mask, I think I'd have to write on it, you know, like, um, you know, wearing this under duress. I mean, I'd hit, on the mask, it'd have to be protest of mm -hmm. some sort because. Mm -hmm. There's no way. I mean, I belong to Jesus. I'm not property of the state, contrary to their opinion, contrary mm -hmm. to their imaginations, contrary to their demonic devices and stuff they've got us to conscript to that we didn't know, that our parents didn't know when they mm -hmm. signed our birth certificate and all that stuff. So, um, you know, as I have discovered, now I know they get away with this. Well, it just looks like they're getting away with. They're not getting away with anything. No. I used to wonder why the scripture said he was coming to judge those that merchandised in the yes. souls of men. Okay. He, they're not getting away with anything. So all this conscription, because uh, according to anything that is correct, and if it was actually real common law that we were under, uh, fraud voids any contract. Mm -hmm. And they've committed fraud exponentially. Yeah. Agreed. So, you know. So, of course, as I said, I don't want to elaborate too much because I want to give Brother Ben and Sister uh, Angela a chance to speak on this as well. Oh, uh, so my answer would be resoundingly no. OK. And one of the things that before they answer, I'll also add this, that there are people out there in 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 government that are talking about coming to your house in the situation and making sure that you get tested. Now, this isn't the mandatory vax. I'm, I'm talking about the steps that they're taking or threatening to take, it has, I, as far as I know, it hasn't happened anywhere in the United States yet or around the world uh, where they actually came to someone's house and forcibly or tried to at least make them take the situation test. Uh, that hasn't happened, but there are people talking about it. Also, um, uh, Gates, Bill Gates, he wants to decrease the population. This isn't a theory of mine. Uh, anybody that wants to look it up, you can go out. He's openly saying this. Uh, he wants to decrease the population, and he's wanting everyone in the world 
to have this vax. And of course, he's going to be the one that, or his companies are going to be the ones that provide it. And they're saying that uh, uh, Gates in, in particular is saying that there'll be a situation that he wants to have where you can't, you go on the no fly list if you're not vaccinated. Now, this isn't the mark yet, but again, I'm making the point that these things are staging ground for what's to come later, in my opinion. Soft soul conditioning to slowly remove things one drip and drab at a time so that they don't get a complete revolt against what they're doing. Exactly. Uh, but we saw this also after 9-11. We did. With them frisking everybody's gonads and making them walk through these mm -hmm. um detectors that some people were saying hey that stuff is messing up people's dna yep the see i'm glad you brought that up so back in 9 11 what the what the government does what what the the people in power the true people in power do is they're saying okay look at this 9 11 look at what's going on now and while everyone's looking at that they're passing laws we lost a lot of our uh our privacy during 9 11 and I'm not sure people are aware of that, but there were privacy laws that were uh, put in place and people, when they're afraid, are willing to give up their own security because it makes them feel safe, their own privacy rather, to make them feel more secure. You know, the government, big brother's got you. He's going to take care of you. You know, and when things go wrong, he's going to take care of you. So um, I'm sure you remember during 9-11, the patriotism that I even fell for it. I was not awake back then in, in uh, the, the way that I am now. And I got one of those little American flag stickers on the back of my uh, Nissan Pulsar. Uh, I, you know, I loved my country and I was mad at, uh, mad at the, the people that, you know, killed all the, you know, the, ran the planes into the towers and all that. That That's, I, I fell for it. I did. Um Patriotism was at all on high, was an all time high, and while we're looking one way, they're taking our rights away. And you described one of the ways in which they've done that in the uh, in the airports. In the airports, now I don't know if you've flown since then, but I have flown a few times. And I one one trip I took to Michigan, I had my ninety four year old grandmother with me, and they provided her with the wheelchair, and mm -hmm. they gave her the wheelchair. And an attendant was there when they gave her the chair and the attendant went with us to the gate and they had to have her stand up and be searched and search the wow. wheelchair. Mm. Those are the kinds of things that they're doing. And it's already set up. They've got the airports. Uh, you can't take, you know, hand cream that the, uh, that's the certain, certain amount of fluid ounces hand cream. And the idea is that it's, you know, to keep everyone safe because someone's going to, you know, make a hand cream bomb or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I had went with a friend to a courthouse for a legal issue. Was not criminal related. It was just something they were taking care of. And uh, we're going through the metal detector and they made her take off her shoes mm -hmm. uh, because just you know and she didn't have any socks on she just and she was hot boy she was hot that she had to take off her shoes and step on that floor because yeah they said well you can't enter without taking off your shoes and you know they did the real id yeah. it says if you don't give them all your documents that you can't enter a courthouse or get on a plane so they're they're already yep they, listen what they're telling everybody is y'all slaves we own you you'll do what we tell you or else yeah yeah, and this this might blow some people's minds. They may not believe it's true, but we are we are in some ways slaves. Uh, if you have a social security number, uh, and if you have a cell phone, there they I, I know this sounds like a quote unquote conspiracy theory, but they can track you even with your phone off. They can turn on your speaker, your your microphone on your phone, and listen to your conversations. And my gosh, if you have Alexa in your house, if you willingly bought one of those devices, um, I'm not making this up. You can, you can, this information can be checked out on YouTube because they've tested it. People have tested and recorded it. Uh, the thing will listen to your conversations and someone says, oh, you know, we need, we need some, uh, we need some toilet paper. And Alexa comes on and says, do you want me to get toilet paper? Okay, you weren't, they weren't talking. They didn't even say Alexa. They're just, you're having a conversation in your house and that thing picked up on words that you say. It happens to me on my phone sometimes. I'll be talking to somebody 
and my phone, it's it it's it recognized the sound of my voice, which is mm-hmm. helpful sometimes if I'm driving or hands free, and mm-hmm. I can say call mom, you know, whatever. Uh, and it 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 uh, listens to what I say and then go, it does some search. Like if I'm talking about I, I need a recliner, and it'll say, I've done a search. This is what I found on recliners. So they're they're paying attention. They're tracking and they're trying to they're trying to find. Uh, easier ways to track. And uh, this even involves the Pope. The Vatican also is trying to get everyone a bank account and everyone a cell phone. Why? Do you think that the, mm-hmm. that the Pope and, and the Vatican are so concerned about people that they just want to make sure that everyone, even in third world countries, has a bank account and a cell phone because they're concerned about them being able to communicate and then being able to know? No, that's to track and control. And yeah, I you remember Obama when he came in, he was giving away phones so that yeah. everybody could have a phone because not everybody had the internet. So it's one way to get you connected to they the want every, Exactly. They want mm-hmm. everyone connected because uh, the. Let me, if, if Brother Ben. Uh, yeah, sorry. Me, Chris, <laughs> I get I'd excited. I'd li- no, no, no. Hold your thoughts. We're going to continue. But I'd like to get. Uh, Brother Ben and Sisters Angel's thoughts on this. Brother Ben, uh, what do, what do you think about this? Um, well, uh, did I hear uh, Crips? Did you say that you think the uh, the Mark of the Beast will be a vaccine or, or potentially a vaccine? No, no, no. I'm saying there are people out there that believe. Oh, okay. It will be somehow tied in with the mandatory vax that they're going to put out. That's where some of the fear is coming from. No, I'm not saying that. I'm I, okay. It, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but I do, I do believe, like you said, it's uh, it's, it's kind of like a, a dress rehearsal or a, a type. Um, and also, too, I don't know if you guys ever uh, saw this, but um, Bill Gates uh, Foundation mm-hmm. uh, patented a, uh, a a tattoo, essentially a skin tattoo, an etching, if you will. Yes. Um, and on it, but it's more than a tattoo. It's, it's like a tattoo. But but if you look at it, it looks like it actually has thorns or fangs sticking out. And it actually goes in your skin like it, it it's a it, it's like embedded into your skin. And I thought I was curious that oh he's gotta have the thorns and the fangs there, you know. Yep. Um and also too, this ID twenty twenty, I believe it was, the patent number on that has uh it's six oh six oh six. Um and again another another just in your face. Um they laugh at us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, also, yeah, I think it's laughing. You know, I, I think about this earlier that uh, this whole COVID thing, you know, the number one thing that was short is toilet paper, almost as if they're telling us, yeah, we, it, it's bullshit, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. So. But those, wow. those, those, good, those yeah. good points, Brother Ben. Yeah. I don't, Angel, if you want to step in, uh, I don't want to. Well, you know, I am. Um... I, I was uh, not haven't been on on YouTube very much for the past several days because I've been uh, 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 feverishly gardening. Uh, you know, I, I go through like this seasonal depression when the winter comes, and then as soon as it gets warm, I get overly ambitious and I kill myself out in the yard. Uh, and so, but when I did, I, 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 I like I I look at my subscription feed and I see the same talking points on like every other video and it's all about gates it's all about the vaccine forced vaccination it's all about this this uh quantum dot something uh lucifer some type of uh um enzyme i guess in the either in like a tattoo or in a vaccine um and ooh, the enzyme that's active that makes the that, that lights up is called lucifer bingo nailed must be the mark of the beast and like everybody's talking about it including so many channels that I'm still sub to, but I know, I know for a fact that they're, they're shills. Um, mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Uh, and they're just spoon feeding us this Gates thing. Yep. And I've been terrified of forced vaccinations for years. Yeah. Um, and now suddenly mm-hmm. they're putting it up. Like, they, you know, there's a, there's a petition um, against uh, the uh, Bill and Melinda Gates foundation and like the forced vaccination thing. That's like uh, they got so many signatures that the White House has to respond. Now, that's ex- we've been talking about this forever, but they've done everything in their power to make sure that people are suddenly paying attention and suddenly reacting. People are afraid. Mm-hmm. People are, are suddenly activated to yep. actually stand up for their rights and resist vaccination. Even people that weren't even really against vaccines are, are afraid of this now. 
They've yep. done everything they can to drum this up. So I think it's misdirection. Right. Uh, uh, they're not stupid, you no. know. They've, they 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 could have done, not done any of this and 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 had a better shot of getting people to cooperate with a forced vaccine than this mm-hmm. whole, you know, more I call it moronavirus to avoid messing with moronavirus. <laughs> um, uh, that's, that's, better, that's better than my my situation thing. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Also, I, I implore everybody to start using that moronavirus. I and, like um, it. <laughs> just like one better it. Off. <laughs> please do it's great it's, it, it immediately insults anybody that believes in it it's wonderful and um <laughs> so i just use it casually like as if i don't realize that it's that, I, that i'm spelling it wrong it's really funny um and uh, anyway so I, I don't think that i'm really you know i'm spun because i know for a fact that that they wouldn't have done all this and and caused all of this hoopla and caused everybody to have a reason to suddenly be afraid of government overreach and um, mm-hmm. like fascism, real fascism, and uh, and vaccinations. I don't think that uh, that this is the agenda at all. I don't. I think the gates has been put up at a like. I think ultimately they want these things, but I don't think this is how they're gonna. Mm-hmm. I don't think the vaccine is how they're gonna do it. They don't need to vaccinate people to uh to accomplish um so many of the aims people people say vaccines are meant to accomplish and don't get me wrong i do think that vaccines are evil and i believe Mm -hmm. virology was literally invented out of whole cloth just to justify vaccination once Mm -hmm. they already had antibiotics and stuff they needed a new boogeyman so don't get me wrong but i know they're not dumb because i know that uh that they had me believing like everything that wasn't true, like most of my life. Uh, and, and they're subtle. They know how to socially engineer people. They have people, you know, clamoring for a, the right to kill their own children as if that's liberty. That's how mm. spun they have everybody. Yeah. Right? Right. And they're subtle about it. Yes. <laughs> they don't, they don't need to. So this is the opposite. This is ham fisted. This is mm-hmm. in your face, beating you over a head. Like, Hey, you better get worried about government, you know, <laughs> overreach and forced vaccinations. And you guys all better start looking at, you know, Bill Gates is like, like, like literally Hitler. <laughs> like they're, 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 they're asking for it on purpose. And I, I think it's a bait and switch. I think all of this is a bait and switch. I think for the truth movement, it was largely a bait and switch. I, I think mm-hmm. that, that Satan has to tear down the establishment. Um, that's what he's going to do. The Antichrist is going to, ride in on a white horse like a like a truther and expose all the so-called evil um mm. and uh and you know i think that that's like that that uh that documentary out of shadows yeah, yeah you know i think that that's that's just a setup it's just all of this has been a setup and not that it's not true i know for a fact like a lot like for instance you know the the, the core uh you know claims at least of pizzagate are true I know because I <laughs> I followed that evidence right into my own backyard, so to speak, and yeah. discovered mm-hmm. all these people in my hometown that I had grown up with were all part of this. And then they admitted it. So if it were all bogus, it wouldn't have led me anywhere. But um, mm-hmm. it's also been handed to us on a silver platter because people are so carnal that um, even though they can see all this evil um, and, and they can see that Satanism is real and like this, this ritualistic pedophilia is real yep. and that these forced vaccine agendas are all of this. They can believe all that's real and still ignore what the Bible says, which is that we're not supposed to seek an earthly kingdom and right. we're not supposed to try to establish one. And right. so they'll have all these Q people believing everything right up into that point. And then now they're, they're talking about with the whole Q movement, a thousand years of peace once you know donald trump oh, yeah. <laughs> once donald trump okay. uh, defeats all the bad well, guys that's not, yeah. that reminds me reminiscent of george bush would i think it was it george bush a, a thousand, thousand points, points of, of light uh-huh. yeah the first one yeah. herbert walker yep right yep yep uh-huh and so i i really and, and i you can test it out the spirit of antichrist when you talk to so-called truthers and you tell them that it doesn't get better before it gets worse it doesn't mm. uh, that Jesus has to come back and fix it. Um, they, yeah. they can they can be right on board with you about so many things. But when you tell them that man can't fix it, yep. see right. what demons come out of them. Yeah. Ooh, girl, right. you better speak. I told you when people mention the name of Jesus, they scatter like roaches. Well, uh-huh. I, I mentioned this before. Uh, and I, just to 
kind of piggyback on what Angel was saying is that yeah, I agree. And I mentioned this before, like I think Q, I think the swamp is gonna be drained. All these people, all these, all these caricatures mm-hmm. of evil, like Bill Gates, like you said, it's over the top caricature. Um, it's it's like you know, it's, just, it's a script basically, and. I believe that the swamp, so to speak, will be drained. And like I said before, that mm-hmm. you know, it, it's like a demon cast out of a man. Um, mm. it, you know, it, it'll be cleaned up, but it's only going to usher a, a greater evil. And you know, <laughs> when you look at it's just like when you look at the law of Moses, you see your you see evil within yourself. It makes you weak. Well, mm-hmm. in the same way, when you look at some of this evil stuff coming out, I think I, I know I experienced. I was not very wise. When I was looking into mm-hmm. things like Pizzagate and I was looking, going down these rabbit holes and I felt spiritually weak and gross and uh, just defeated and it, it, it affected me. And I, I was saved. Well, imagine what would happen to someone who's not saved. It's right. only going to make them weaker. It's going to make them weaker. It's like staring into Desperate. the abyss. Yeah, it's going to be, it's, it's like staring into the abyss and um, it makes, I think it makes you spiritually weak and it's only going to allow you to be, um, it's, it's only going to make the world more ripe for uh, further um, further evil. Um, mm. that that thousand year uh years of peace. That's interesting. I never heard that. Um, uh, but yeah, that's uh, that seems yeah. very consistent with well, the, with, you know, it's deep the in the Q lore. <laughs> <laughs> the devil uh, likes to take the things first of all that the Lord has already set in order. Yeah, and then make a mockery of them and twist them and flip them for his own purposes. So we, <clears throat> excuse me, we know that Jesus is going to have a thousand year millennial reign. So why wouldn't he push it? Oh, we can have a thousand years. What would you say? Peace? Or was it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you were listening. I, I don't know. I got the Donald us. Trump at the helm. I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. But look what they've been telling us this whole time. Remember, they turn everything upside down. They flip things backwards. All you've been hearing is we're going to keep you safe, 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 safe. If I hear how they go keep you safe one more time. But now what the Bible say when they say peace and safety. So right mm-hmm. now we've got safe, safe, safe. Now you're talking about they're saying peace for a thousand years, uh-huh. peace. So when they put that together, the Bible says sudden destruction will rain down upon them and they shall not escape. Interesting. You already got half of the puzzle coming. They already did it. Yep. Yep. But I wanted to touch on something to you guys. You guys said so much. I, I got some, some things I want to go back yeah. and talk about. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for example, Brother Cripps, when you were talking about how your phones already spy on you. Yeah. I've had this, you guys, and I know this has happened to you, where you're just talking to a friend. Let's say you decide, you say, oh, you know what? I need to pick up some deodorant. Yep. And the next thing, you pick up your phone and you yep. open your browser to look for something and they're deodorant ads. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you didn't even look, you weren't looking for that. You're looking for something else. Yep. Yep. And I'm like, oh my God, these things are spying on us all the time. And you Real remember, bad. you remember uh, Obama, he talked about this. He said, what they talked about was metadata. Remember how they had this big thing about metadata and they kept talking about metadata? Yep. Mm-hmm. That, there, there's a glaring example. If you're on Facebook at all and your settings are automatically already opened to track what you do, not even just on Facebook, but when you're offline on, fa- on, on the Internet. So when you search, like I use the example recliner, so I'm looking for a recliner and I'm not on Facebook looking for it. I'm on another site. And then as I'm scrolling up my feed on Facebook, guess what I see to the right hand side? Advertising. Lazy boys. Yep. Lazy boys everywhere. (laughs) Everywhere I look, a lazy boy. So this is not, again, this is not a conspiracy theory. These things are happening. They are tracking you. Uh, It is not a free, uh, free internet. Um, you pay for it by giving away your privacy. There's no doubt about that. They they do want to know what people are doing. And they'll say, oh, we just want to know because we're helping you. We're helping you find a recliner uh, easier. Um, no, they are. They, that's that may be what it looks like. They are tracking us. And this isn't just on Facebook. Um, I believe that movies are truth in plain sight and the news mm-hmm. is a complete total lie. That's the way it's yes. set up. So people watch the news. That's a lie. And mm-hmm. truth comes out in movies. Now, people are going to say, well, it's evil to watch movies. Okay, I, I hear you. But if you want to see some of the some of the truth that the world is putting out there, mm-hmm. it's in movies all over the place. And so I don't know if you guys are familiar with Black Mirror. Uh, there's also a movie uh, uh, Tom Cruise was in Minority Report, and in that movie, he's walking around in a mall, and 
every kiosk he walks by in the mall recognizes him, facial recognition, and, mm -hmm. and says, hey, do you want another uh, 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 pair of sunglasses that you bought a couple of years back? We have them right here. The, in other words, they're taking each person's personal data and selling back to them, but in that same way, they're tracking them. They're not just, you know, trying to make it more convenient for you to buy a pair of sunglasses or recliner. They are tracking everyone. There's cameras, mm -hmm. more and more cameras everywhere in every city. Uh, Great Britain is one of the most um, camera laden cities in, in the world right now. And they're saying that, oh, it's to protect us from terrorism because they had a quote unquote terrorist attack not too long ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so under, under the guise of protecting the citizens of Great Britain, they now have cameras everywhere, all the stores, all the traffic lights, all that. They have some of that here. They have the, the, the traffic cameras uh, under the guise of protecting people and ticketing you if you run through a red light. Uh, but it's taking license plate numbers. Um, one more thing. I, I uh, was in transportation. I drove uh, like, like uh, SUVs, picked up people and dropped them off at the airport. And we had to have special stickers on on the vehicle, and they they would track. All, you, you think there's too many people going to the airport for them to track every vehicle? Nope. Mm -hmm. They have enough cameras up there to track every vehicle that goes in there under the guise of keeping people safe. And they have rules in place. You know, you you, you have to uh, go in a certain lane if you're dropping and picking people up. And I I understand that, but um, the guy that I worked for would. Uh, you know, had all these rules in place and I followed the rules. So I didn't get in trouble in that way, but he would show me a list of all the, all the times I'd been to the airport and the, the airport's the one that gave him the list. Mm. So wow. they, they know what people are doing. They know where you're going. Uh, and they want it. They want to do that even more. If you live off the grid, they can't, they can't track you. Mm -hmm. If you don't have internet and you're not hooked up to the electric grid, you know, people, I'm not suggesting that, but there are people that uh, go way more into this stuff than I do right. that are, are just living in a cabin somewhere, but they want to get it so they can even track those people. Somehow, some way, they want to make it so they can't buy or sell unless they have this mark. That's what we're headed, headed towards. And these are just stepping stones leading toward that of eventually being able to make sure that everyone uh, is tagged and located so that when they put these things in place, they can go to every cabin on every side of every hill and try to get everyone uh, to to get signed up for this mark and allegiance to the beast. Yeah, well, you already kind of everybody who has that gets a bill for any kind of, you know, you're in the system. So if you get any mm -hmm. any kind of bill for any kind of services like electricity or mm -hmm. the sewer, the city, yeah. you know, there, but there are people like you're saying that totally live off the grid they yeah. they have their own solar power or none at all mm -hmm. they just live like people did prior to electricity yep and uh so those are the people which in a lot of the other countries that is the way a lot of people live so uh you know trying to get them all pulled in is is the other part of, the, of their push yeah. but a, a lot of this reminds me some of the stuff that you're talking about of the movie with uh sandra bullock from many years ago, uh, the net, yeah, and how, really. yes, and then how when she, whatever, she, whoever she upset, they came after her and then yep. started really dismantling her life by yeah. changing her identity and taking everything out of her bank account and mm -hmm. all of the things that they took away that made it impossible to even prove who she was. Yeah, that's it. You know, they they literally have that. That power, they could literally drain everybody's bank account tomorrow if they wanted to. They really could. They really could. So if you don't comply, they're going to get to the point where if you don't comply with the things that they're telling you to do, they erase your account. Then what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. yeah. Just control measures, the pressure. Yeah. Uh, that, that's why I say, um, you know, I'm not saying that the the mark of the beast, that the man, the man of sin will not exert extreme pressure. Right. Upon people, you know, for example, it, uh, with all this social credit stuff. But remember when they were doing the and they still are in some ways doing the push to this. And I never trusted it. 
this Bitcoin stuff and these other cryptocurrencies. Yeah. Bitcoin is just one of them. There are many other ones. There are. Uh, I said, but the same people that control the banking system now, yeah. when you look into it, were heavily invested into those coins. Oh, absolutely. And those, you know, those cryptocurrencies. I said, guys, that's a that's a trap. You think you don't have any control now? Yeah. Make it where they can just pull the switch on something. Yep. At least at least you still have the cash. But yeah. I think one of these things that's going on right now is to actually try to de devalue the currency so everybody will cry out for another solution. Absolutely. They want to get rid of cash altogether, and that's for control. Um, how are they going to make a worldwide system where you can't buy or sell if cash is still available and you don't have a debit card, you don't have a bank account? How, how are they going to do that? The only way they can do that is to change the currency and to make everyone do like what you're saying, Bitcoin or some kind of digital digital currency. And here's the, here's the interesting thing. A hundred years ago, people read Revelation and read uh, the book of Daniel and all that. And uh, believers knew that this stuff would, would come up somehow, but they could not make the connection as to how all this stuff would roll out like we can today. We mm -hmm. have, uh, the Bible says, you know, toward the end, uh, knowledge will increase. Knowledge has been increasing. Uh, there was a guy that tracked, I can't think of the guy's name, but he's a Hebrew rooter, but he still has uh, some good information. Uh, one of the things that he tracked was that very idea of knowledge increasing. And he, he said that knowledge has increased uh, since, uh, at least since 1994, every uh, 10 years, since then has increased exponentially uh and and there's some there's some truth to that in all the things that we're able to do now for believers the good news is that everything that's hidden will be revealed uh so uh, for those that believe uh we're not out here in the dark we're we're not walking in darkness we're we're children of the light we walk in his light um so so this whole mark of the beast thing what i'm trying to do is get people to realize they don't have to fear this stuff. They don't have to fear Murano virus. Is that what you called it? Amy? Murano virus. Yes. Murano like virus. Moron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We don't have to fear that. They're trying to create fear and oh, they yeah. aren't getting to some people, even in my own family. I love my sister dearly. She doesn't listen to the show or anything. So I'm not, not going to get in trouble by talking about this. Um, but my nephew uh, usually comes over once a week to to play with Anka. He calls me Anka, seven years old. He he comes over and we play video games and hang out and stuff. And uh, I really enjoy that. It's something I really enjoy. But I have not been complying with the Murano virus. I have not done anything except you haven't for, obeyed the virus, Jason. Obey the virus. Right. Thank you. <laughs> except for when I, when I do have to go to the store and get something, I do abide by a step on the line where they tell me to step. And that's not because I want to. It's because I'm not trying to draw attention to myself. That's the only reason. Right. I'm not wearing right. a mask. But anyway, she she got mad at me and said that because she's wearing a mask and she does, I forget what the name of uh, name it, but there's a shopping service where you uh, you order groceries and someone goes and, and picks them up for you and delivers them. And that's what she's been doing because their 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 school is closed. They uh, run a, a private Christian school, mm -hmm. um, so she's she's busy all the time. She's, she's always doing stuff, and so she's doing this uh, shopping for people thing, and she has to wear a mask and gloves every time. And uh, because she heard me talking about I'm not following the Murano virus, she said, that just makes me feel like an idiot because you, you make me feel stupid because, you know, you're not you're not doing all this stuff and I do it. And mm. so I'm just an idiot. I well. said, I never called you an idiot. But the bottom line of, uh, of it is because I'm not following the Murano virus, my nephew can't come visit me until That's until dangerous. they decide until they decide to uh, lift the ban on uh, uh, staying at home and all that. So I'm prevented from spending time with my dear nephew and I got in trouble because he said to me, wasn't something I said to him, he said to me, we, we stopped at the convenience store and I said, I'm surprised your mom's not making you wear a mask and gloves when you go in the convenience store. It wasn't a, wasn't a dig or anything. I just was really honestly surprised that, that she wasn't making him do that. And he said, he said, well, I don't believe in all that stuff. And I was like, I was shocked. Mm. I was like, really? Your parents, your parents believe in all that. So that night he went home and had an argument with his parents about the Murano virus and, and saying that he talked to Unka about it and Unka doesn't believe it either. 
And then next day I got an angry phone call about that. And she said uh, that she can't see me and he can't see me until they, they uh, decide to lift the ban. So right. I brought that story up for one point only and to say that some people, and they're believers, they're believers, but they're still asleep. Oh they're, yeah. As a Christian, you think she'd know better than to than to just like, oh well, something makes me feel stupid, so I'm gonna just not consider it because that makes me feel like like all of the gospel is about humbling yourself and yeah, feeling stupid. I was wrong about everything if the Bible was true, you know. And so when Christians mm. turn away because they don't want to feel dumb, like like that wasn't an argument about the evidence. That was an argument like, well, that would make me feel dumb, so yeah. I'm not gonna consider it. That's, That's such a dangerous mindset. It is. That's a good point, Angel. Thank you for that. And we're, we're, the conversation isn't over. When this stuff dies down a little bit and they lift the ban, um, we already have scheduled a, a time to have a conversation about this where I'm going to lovingly explain to her why I believe some of the things that I do. And she can make a decision. Not now, I was wrong in discussing it with my nephew because if they're trying to teach him certain things, he's not my son. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but how that, far does that go? How far does that go well, that, when it comes to children? What about the mark and stuff? Like, you know exactly what I mean? Like, people, angel, you, that, you have to have these conversations that's with why, the children you love. That's why. If I, I may, guys, yeah. If I can interject something, yeah, I, I was thinking about one one of the things that I perceived because there, I have an, a long time family friend that I was trying to. I felt this was the perfect opportunity to open their eyes about some things some things they are a believer but they have when it comes to this stuff zero discernment mm -hmm. they only believe everything that they see on that television yeah and it was astonishing to me and it was also sad to me to see how many believers weren't exercising any type of spiritual discernment in this matter mm -hmm. did you guys i mean like you're you're talking about your sister a uh, sister angel did you see anybody that uh, or or brother Ben, uh, did you did you guys? You mean in my family? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. Well, family my dad. I mean, my 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 aunt and my dad like they don't really believe it, but at the same time, they're just um like they're they're being cautious anyway, just because uh they are they you know really can't afford to get the flu, but they do mm -hmm. think it's pretty much just the flu. But you know, my dad will get mad at me when he feels like I'm going down too many rabbit trails. Like he just gets frustrated because he doesn't really want to think about it. Certain things mm -hmm. are a bridge too far for him. But I mean, you know, my dad's not asleep by any means, but I, I honestly, the people I've seen are people like that. I would follow on, uh, you know, on YouTube, like um, there's mm -hmm. a guy we've read the documents, John Grissom, and he has, I've actually recommended his channel before. And I still, uh, I still, uh, he's still dear to me and I still respect him a lot. Um, but he's maintaining that this is a bioweapon. Now he doesn't have the same angle that most people do. He, he thinks, well, it's a, <laughs> he says it's, it's Hollywood to think a bioweapon has to be deadly, you know, and really bad. Like he, he, but he's maintaining that it's real and it's a, you know, it's a bioweapon. And, um, the fact that so many people are now believing it's a hoax, that just makes him work. He's a contrarian, right? So he's going to he's going to go against the tide of the truth community that way. But, um, yeah. but it was heartbreaking for me. I told him, I said, I feel like I'm being gaslit when I listen to your show because it's so clearly fake. And to hear somebody maintaining that it's that it like, like just not acknowledging that uh, a lot of people don't want to be wrong, you know? Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. then, you know, there's other people on YouTube um, that I've just completely had to just completely quit listening to like uh, Adam Green, no more news. He he went full full bore bioweapon, you know. Uh, like he, he revealed himself, in my opinion, yep. as as a, as a deceiver, uh, because he and he blo he he blocked me. You know, he shouted at my channel before, but he blocked me <laughs> because I started uh, holding his feet to the fire about his guest Christopher John Birkness, who was like, Israel's going to make the vaccine, and then they're not going to share it with us. That's the truth, you know, and I, and I was like, how, Adam, how could you like and this guy was talking about how we needed martial law because it's a public health emergency. And so, um, you know, it's really revealed so many people. And then the thing that's confusing, though, is that at first, you know, it was like, you know, Lisa and I and people in our fellowship 
obviously like you, Jason, and a lot of people were going with their gut saying this is not, you know, something's fishy with this. It's, you know, like we, we couldn't say for sure it wasn't real, mm-hmm. but we were pretty much saying it wasn't real. <laughs> and then um, now it's become all the rage to say that, but that doesn't make it any less true. Uh, mm-hmm. But it is, but it, but it, it is confusing to me because um, now you don't need discernment to realize that because it's uh it's totally uh popularized you know a lot of the doctors that they're putting forth like judy mikovitz or whatever and uh uh batar and these people are 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 agents in place mikovitz maintains that hiv is real and Mm -hmm. i I consider her downright evil in my opinion she's exposing dr fauci right well fauci's greatest crime is that he he uh he upheld and and really in a lot of ways was uh the granddaddy of the HIV hoax, which is is, is, is is so deadly and killed my mother. And this woman knows better. I know she knows that it's not real, but she's, she's coming out as like some, some new figurehead of, of, you know, medical truth. And that's one thing I am noticing is so many people are talking about this. People are questioning the existence of viruses and yet, you know, nobody's having a major discussion about the HIV virus not existing, the HIV not causing AIDS. That is a, that's a no-go zone. I haven't seen anybody discussing it, but that's how you'll know, in my opinion, because it's not reasonable that these people who are questioning all this stuff haven't seen House of Numbers, haven't, don't realize that Carrie Mullis, who, by the way, conveniently died a young man <laughs> in August, mm just a few short months before all this started. You know, mm-hmm. he was the, the Nobel laureate who invented PCR, which is, you know, the kind of uh, protocol, the, the lab laboratory test that they're right. misusing to create all these false diagnoses. And he put his whole career on the line to fight against the HIV hoax. He, he wrote the foreword for the book, The HIV Hoax. And he was like Fauci's nemesis. And he also had been sounding the alarm about how they were misusing PCR, his test. To, it was never meant to test to see if somebody had a virus. That wasn't what it was for. It right. was it, it was not that's that was t- a total uh, bastardization of the intent of that whole uh, uh, thing he designed. Well, anyway, nobody's talking about him and um, that I've heard hardly anybody. And mm-hmm. uh, it's not possible because some of the greatest uh, information that's been amassed about the the, the the fraud of the CDC and the WHO and the World Health Organization and, and the fraud of virology has been amassed by people who are so-called AIDS deniers. AIDS, you know, the AIDS denialist movement, uh, quote unquote. That's what you'll get if you Google any of this stuff. You'll, you'll go to websites where it's people trying to fight this lie. But somehow the YouTube truth community has just never heard of it. Yeah. BS. And mm-hmm. I have told people about this. You know, I have I've contacted people directly and, and told them about this. One of them, Global Watchman News, uh, Lori Swan, she uh, she showed her true colors big time because I told her um, uh, like a, like it was months ago when all this first started. I told her to look into house, the, the movie House of Numbers and um, uh, basically uh, uh, you know, told her about the HIV hoax and everything. And she was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll look into that. Like two days later, she had on some fraud, some faker who's supposedly some inside, you know, whistleblower who was like some biochemist, but also like an MK ultra monarch butterfly. What, whatever the point is, is that she was coming on with inside information about how how the, the Moronavirus was spliced with HIV. And that's it's like that's why it's so deadly. And that's mm-hmm. why the HIV meds right. treat it, which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Any you know, <laughs> HIV meds treating uh, oh, uh moronavirus, uh, that doesn't prove anything except that they're both retroviruses, yeah. one and two, <laughs> they're both viruses, allegedly. Uh so it, you know, even if you go on the premise that all that's real, that's the only reason it would work. Right. Um, but anyway, um, uh, so she, so then I contacted her after that and I said, how didn't you look in the house of numbers? Like did you, any of the stuff I told you, she's like, uh, you do your research. I'll do mine. Smiley oh. face. Oh, oh, wow. It was so evil the way she did it. And it well, was just like, that's what told me everything I need to know about her too. Well, this is interesting. 
<laughs> did you say did the smiley face have a mask? I did. I did. Did it have a mask? <laughs> no, this was oh, before that's the a perfect segue to <laughs> yeah, what I should. wanted to ship to. Oh, by minute, the way, I, I did. I did wear. I, I wore go. a mask the other day, and I I had to to get into Menards where they're not even mm. letting children in. They wouldn't even let my kids in. Joel had to come all the way to sit with them in the parking lot, all the way from home, because they wouldn't let anybody under sixteen in their store. And um, anyway. But they also <laughs> wouldn't let you in without a mask. Wow. And I thought, well, so what I did was I put on hospital scrubs because I have some from when I was a home health aide. And people are like worshiping nurses and, and even oh, like wow. Walmart employees. <laughs> and so I, I put on scrubs and I put on the mask and I put duct tape over the mask that said obey. Nice. Because <laughs> I thought, well, if anybody sees a nurse, quote unquote, walking around, uh, with something ca countering the, the lie, they might think. So, uh, you know, I didn't actually talk to anybody, but just my presence there in that, in that get up was, was enough. And uh, so I will wear the mask for, for in, in that circumstance because it is a very good passive aggressive way to, <laughs> to, to uh, wow. get the message out. But, but you know, sister, when we did our video, mm -hmm. HIV does not equal AIDS. Right. We were Cutting way... Edge. We were way ahead because we were using spiritual discernment. Well, it's not yeah. because we're geniuses. The Lord used yeah. the knowledge that we had and the understanding we had most assuredly. But we were weeks ahead of other people coming yeah. out and finally saying this. And we went all the way but. back to the beginning to show mm -hmm. because I saw it coming. I said, they're going to spin this into something to either push vaccines on the masses or to scare the heaven out of everybody because fear, I told the trauma based, it causes trauma. And that trauma, if you, if you add to that, the loss of employment, the loss of a loved one, the it, a physical trauma to the body, all of these other factors. And then you add the fear factor, which they used to have a television show that was highly evil and demonic <laughs> with the rituals they did on there. Yeah. Um, the the that that fear factor the bible tells us men's hearts can fail them for fear so i was like what trying to warn people guys this is not the road to go down we're supposed to trust in the lord we're supposed to be talking to believers here yeah and i was just astonished at the level of people that were uh, the people that were willing to just throw faith aside remember now fear is a spirit so mm -hmm. when people are operating in fear, they are in agreement with that spirit. And it is yep. a demonic agreement. Mm. Yep. And I, try, I tried to warn people about it as best I could. But it's like they didn't want to hear it. It's like they wanted to embrace the spirit of fear. And it was sad. And I saw person after person do this. But we went back and we went from the beginning on how HIV did not equal AIDS and, and how viruses work, which is why we were talking about it, because we don't hear the real so-called science. And I, I tell you, I'm going to say this. I have always perceived for many years now that the word science is a play on the word seance because they uh -huh. consort with devils to come up with the stuff they come up with. There's a reason the medical symbol is the caduceus. Uh, which is the loins of the Baphomet. There's a reason. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And that's not to say that all medical people are evil or demonic, but you guys got to know just like there's good and bad in everything that applies to the medical profession. But I wanted to move on to talk about something that you just mentioned, which was masks. Do you mind if I read one short uh, scripture real quick to close? No, up? sir. Go oh. right ahead, please. Okay, so this is Revelation 19. He and the, they're talking about the uh, the um, uh, what's his name? I can, I just lost the name of the guy. The um, uh, uh, the Antichrist. Sorry, the the Antichrist figure. Whatever. Um, he causes all. This is from verse 16. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Um, I just want to say that uh, believers do not have to worry about this. He will try to cause, it says he'll, he'll cause, meaning he'll set things up 
to to make people take this, but it will be a decision. They're not going to be able to force this on anyone because it includes worship. It's not just having a, a tattoo put on your on your hand or on your forehead. Yep. It includes worship. Uh, there's another verse, we won't go to it, but there's another verse that talks about anyone that worships the beast, worships the image of the beast will be killed. Uh, so it, 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 these things are, are tied into each other. It's not going to be something where they have they, they can force you. Now you may, as a believer, you may be taken to the FEMA camp and you may, you may be uh, executed for not taking it, but they can't, they can't do it. They, they can't force it on you. They can make things difficult for you. They can try to cause you to do it. Um, and lastly, thank you, uh, uh, Sister Lisa, for giving us so, giving us so much time. And I loved everyone's comments, and I appreciate you uh, letting me kind of air this out a little bit. But as a believer, all you have to do is keep reading Scripture and keep your eyes on Christ. If you're in that place, you are like the wise virgins that had their oil filled. You don't have to worry about this stuff. Uh, even if you lose your life, the next the face that you'll see will be our Lord and Savior's uh, face. You'll, you'll be in the presence of the Lord. Um, so keep your heads up out there with the Mur Murano virus and uh, just keep trusting God. That's all we can do right now. Don't trust the government. Don't trust any of the leaders out there because they do not have your best interest at heart at all. But Christ And does. don't trust YouTubers. Don't. Yeah. Yes. Don't it's trust. I think a great deal of them were in place literally for this event. Right. Oh, yeah, probably. Specifically for this. That's probably true. Anybody that's fear mongering, that is not the spirit of the Lord. Thank you. It is the spirit, uh, by the way, sister. It is the spirit. It is. It is a spirit, but it is not the spirit of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Um, The other thing that I wanted to, to shift to, uh, oh, oh, just in closing that last part out that you were saying about, uh, I love what Hal Lindsey said. I'll never forget it. I love what he said. Excuse me, pardon me, I'm going to sneeze, so give me one second. God bless you. <laughs> yes, I didn't want to do that, and everybody's here. Uh, <laughs> the, he said, if the man of sin is close, Jesus is even closer. Okay? Because mm. the man of sin can't be revealed until we are taken out of the way. And that means Jesus is between us and him. Okay? Now... I wanted to, to shift to something that you guys touched on, which is the masks themselves. And Sister Angel, with your experience, I've seen other people talking about this on YouTube, that they have children and they're trying to go into an establishment that is saying you can't bring them in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is totally unlawful, yet yeah. they're getting away with it. And I'm wondering how much longer this is going to stand before people start suing the pants off of these people. Yeah. I don't I don't know, especially the people who still have money. You know, how much longer is this going to continue? Um, but what I wanted to get to was the origin in history of masks, because I perceived a few weeks ago for at first, hardly anybody was wearing the mask. Then you started seeing maybe 30, 40 percent of the public wearing. Then you started seeing roughly 50% every other person wearing them. Now it's like it's hard to find somebody that's not wearing them. And uh, I, I said, I, right around the time it got to be almost everybody wearing them, I said, I think this is a, gitan a gigantic satanic mega ritual yep. right before our eyes. Because it's not just the United States. It's worldwide. And so I went and I said, what is the origin of masks anyway, because I started thinking about the purge and how they wear masks. I started thinking about secret police and how they wear masks. I started thinking about KKK and other mm -hmm. Satanists that wear hoods, which just is another form of masks. Yep. And how much mm -hmm. evil is tied to mask wearing. And the first one of the first websites that I found, uh, Brother Ben, if you could go ahead and and bring that up for everyone to see if you haven't already. Um, yeah, yeah. History. It's called the history of mass, and this is .net, and it says mass origin and history. Mass are part of human culture; have have been part of human culture for centuries. They were used for sacred purposes and for profane, sometimes in the same time. They also had more or less practical use. Okay, now this says learn more about the history of mass. Now this this is the part that got me. 
History of African Mass. It says African culture used mass in rituals from the earliest days of human civilization. They are the most commonly used for purposes of communicating with spirits and bringing them in our plane. Hmm. Now, hmm. I didn't write that. I didn't make that up. But this is the origin of what mask wearing was about to actually <laughs> communicate with spirits and bring them into our plane. Mm. Y'all, I tried to share this with other believers and it's like they just did not get it. Oh no, this is real. The moron virus is real. The moron <laughs> virus is real. This is, you don't understand. You? And I'm like, if you would calm down for a minute, that's not how viruses work. The stuff they're telling you on the news is not correct. The people who know about virology, the people who have won Nobel Prizes for it, will tell you they're already in your body, 70 trillion of them. This is not how they work. And it, it, they, they can't hear you. I said, well, can you look past what the explanation is, what the plausible explanation is, and see the spiritual behind it, the possible spiritual connection? Because this has never happened before, as far as I know, in the history of the world, that everyone has been compelled. Remember, the man of sin is going to cause. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of the term plausible deniability. Mm -hmm. they, they have given everyone a plausible reason to believe that, there, that that is needed. And those of us who are looking at the spiritual side of it are going, wait a minute. Am I supposed to believe this is just a coincidence that mask wearing goes back thousands of years yeah, and yeah. that it was used to summon spirits and bring them into our plane? Mm. You remember when people were talking about CERN and how, oh, my God, they're going to open a portal. And I wasn't worried about that. And I'll tell you why. Mm. Because people was opening portals with Ouija boards. Yep. I mean, you can hear horror Mario. stories from people who were messing with that stuff or using tarot cards or simply went to somebody that was a witch and they, uh, you know, or they got into demonic agreement with something and Spirit they opened box. a portal. OK. Box, yeah. 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 I always thought that was. Yeah. Spirit box. Or, Soul or ties or with stuff and all this. So you, you, you don't even need CERN to do that. OK. Right. So here we go with these ritual masks. Mm -hmm. That people are wearing. And listen, y'all, it's the creepiest, weird feeling ever to go and see people and they get out of their car and they're next to you and they have a mask on and you don't yeah. know if they're angry. You don't know if they're happy. It, it's, it's creepy because you can't see if, they, if they're smiling at you and if they are, you don't know it. Right. So it, it's like it's so unnatural. Mm -hmm. And if you yeah. think about a baby, when a baby is born. <laughs> A baby, excuse me, is probably one of the most vulnerable beings on the planet next to an elderly person Amen. who may be infirmed. Amen. And they don't pop out with masks on. No. <laughs> God isn't, he didn't say, it's the most unnatural thing ever. And yet look at how many people are so willing to just do it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, without any problem. And they shame people for not doing it. That's the other scary part is the reaction of people when the someone right who has the right to say, I'm not going to wear it. I mean, I, I told you my experience where I went to a particular burger stand who I will never go to again in life. Yeah. And they told me when they came out to bring out my burger to the car, the girl had on a mask and gloves. I understand she's following the company's protocol. I yeah. don't have a point, problem with that. She's, she's got to keep her job. Then they're going to let her keep her job if she refused. So she goes to hand me the order to go, you have to put on a mask. And I said, no, I don't. She said, well, it's, it's the law. I said, no, it's not the law. It's a, it's a <laughs> policy of your corporation, and it is a request of the governor, but it's not a law. I said, uh, I said I'm not going to put it on. And she said, well, I can't serve you. I said, well, you can tell your manager why you're taking that food back inside because I'm not putting on a mask. And so she went back inside and I contacted her corporate office and I wrote them a nice little letter about it. And I said, see, what really bothers me is I went to three other fast food places that day 
to pick up because I was with some someone else. And sometimes we like to do a little smorgasbord where we get a little bit of this, a little bit of that. <laughs> and we went to three different places. And I pulled up at the speaker. And if they didn't have a sign there to say, we're, we're, we're asking you to wear a mask, I would say to them, excuse me, are you going to uh, require that I wear a mask to serve me? And every single one of the other places said, no, ma'am, we will not require you to wear a mask. I said, okay, good. And we did business. So it shows you, look, first of all, it's not a law. And second, uh, th these corporations are trying to compel us. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, it's against my religious conviction to wear that mask. Yeah. And they like, we don't care. I said, oh, and see, that's why I'm like, oh, I wish I had some money because they like gift wrapping lawsuits for people. They really are. To compel you yeah. to go against your religious, sincerely held religious belief? Oh, they, oh used, no. to, they used to care about that, Lisa. They used to care. I know. I, I mean, know. If, if you're Muslim, if you're Muslim and you want to get a license, uh, get your get your license in some states, and you you know want to wear your uh, face covering and head covering and stuff, they make uh, in some states, not all states, but in some states they they make uh, exceptions uh, because of your because of their religious beliefs. Covering part of your face for a license picture. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, this is the other part of this that I find deeply disturbing. And I've been warning people about this to be cognizant of who is around you. Because I also witnessed the same day somebody going, and I paid attention, I pay attention to people's body language to see what, what they're up to. Because not everybody means you good. And right. I'm sitting in my car. And there's another car to my right. And this man is walking in front of the cars. And when he gets to the edge of the car that's uh, next to me on the passenger side of that car, he's walking in front of it. He makes eye contact with me and I'm making eye contact with him. Mm -hmm. And he's looking, but I can't tell what his expression is because of this mask. Right. So he goes into the I said, I perceive this person is up to no good mm -hmm. because he stared me down from the time he got to the edge of that car all the way to the in the mind to go into the store that's directly in front of me. A few yeah. minutes later, another man walks past and I perceived he was up to no good. He had a bandana he was using as a mask. Now, anybody knows years ago, if somebody had a bandana on their face, that meant they was a bandit. Now, I know not everybody walking around with bandanas on are bandits, but when these people are making eye contact and they're staring you down, something ain't right. Yeah. Because especially in California, Californians don't make eye contact because we are always getting hit up with some scam somewhere. Somebody wanted some money, something. So people won't make eye contact if they do not want to engage you. When someone makes eye contact, it's because they want to engage you. So now you got to ask, what do they want to engage with me about? Yes. And I watched him go down. I said, he's up to no good, but he went around the corner. This guy that I saw first comes running out of the store a few minutes later. With arms full of stuff running down the street, he is stole from the store. I right. said, I knew he was up to no good, but here's the thing: you can't identify him because he got on a mask. Right. right. So what? Is the, okay, if we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places, principalities and the rulers of darkness of this world, is it possible that they're making it easy? For their cohorts that are at the bottom to do their wickedness? I'm chaos. just asking a question. The sake of, for the sake of chaos. They, uh, exactly. They need, it serves another They need agenda. society to unravel so that the, it demands that a powerful authoritarian figure restore order. Yeah. So they, that's, they, people think it's like, people think that, um, that they that they want they they you know inevitably that they, they want just absolute chaos free for all, but no they want us to be compelled into a corner where we we suddenly will accept will accept the offer from you know who who comes in and and promises to restore order and 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 you know oust all the evildoers and um, you know uh, I actually believe. Uh, uh, there will be, you know, mass executions, mass, you know, beheadings of, uh, of, you know, at least at first, the evildoers, the the pedos, the Hillarys, the, you know, um, and um, Hillary's, 
the Hillary Clintons and Hillary, all the Hillary. people they've held up for us to uh, yeah, the people they've held up as, as scapegoats for us to uh, to pour out our rage on. You know, they have truthers believing that um, that if it weren't for the elite, the world would be a paradise. You know, like literally they say that. So, you know, so many people in the truth movement, it's all because of them. If it weren't for them, you know, we would have the things would be so much better. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, the mask thing, I've been, I've been perceiving that too. Like, like there's all these other explanations, but for me, uh, none of, none of the alternative explanations about like what the, the real agenda is with the mask really, uh, really uh, hits the nail on the head without the ritual component. There's a spiritual component big time, you know, it achieves other aims for them. Sure. But, but it's a spiritual thing. And it's also a sign you wear on your face of, it's a it's a it's a public humiliation ritual too like uh you know because you'll notice like mm. Pence he went to the Mayo Clinic and everybody in the Mayo Clinic is wearing a mask he won't he doesn't wear a mask and he says oh I don't have to wear a mask because I get tested every day and da 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 but it's really because you know none of these politicians you know are seen in masks even briefly they could say, well, we have to make speeches. We're not going to do that in a mask. Well, why not? If it's so important, mm -hmm. why wouldn't you uh, show the new normal, right? Well, we have to get used right. to our politicians talking in masks. But it's because they're, it's, it's, a, it's a sign that, you know, uh, either you're a dupe or you're obedient. Yep. One or the other. Thank you for but that, Sister important. Angel. Thank <laughs> you for that because you remind me what I would write on my mask, which is the new abnormal. Because yeah. there's nothing normal about this. We know what normal is, and this ain't normal. Right. 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 I, I will say, though, that I was really relieved because when I went into Menards, um, well, the first time, so I, uh, there was two times I went. Now, Menards is doing its own thing. Nobody else in our town is, any, is, 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 is telling you can't bring your kids in or, or requiring you to wear a mask. No one else. Um, and still, when you go out in public here in Columbus, Indiana, it's it's still just like it's it's a, you know, I gotta say it. I'm gonna sound like a misogynist, but it's the it's the damn women, you know, <laughs> the women yeah. wearing the mask because women are conformity enforcers. They're just little conformity patrollers. That's what they do. They love the and they're that's why they call them Karens. They they love to enforce conformity and the status quo and 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 that's why women to me not of course not every woman I'm a woman but uh, women being like the like the majority of nurses and the medical mm. profession is so dangerous because they uh, are they, they they have this tendency to, to to really react to anybody that goes outside of the status quo more so than a man would as a you know the average woman and you know i see women even in mixed company women that are out you know with with uh, other guy you know their guy friends or whatever the women will be wearing the masks and the guys won't you, you know the even young women lots of old women which you know i don't fault them for because you know like older people they they worry about getting sick and you know i can understand why even if they think something's up with this, you know, they, they wear a mask just in case I get, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, be too harsh on them, but the young people wearing the mask, I have nothing but contempt for. And, um, this, but this one woman, uh, she saw me outside of Menards after they turned me away with my children and we had mm -hmm. to wait in the parking lot for Joel to get there. Um, and she was, she asked me if I was okay, if I needed help. Cause I was testing man, I was mad. <laughs> I was so mad. And um, I was making sure everybody heard it. And, uh, uh, and she was, she was really nice. She told me she wasn't wearing a mask. And we had a real, and she seemed like, you know, she wasn't real outspoken at first. Mm -hmm. But once I pried, and you know, I, 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 you know, made sure she knew it was safe to speak freely. She, you know, she was totally on board with everything that we're saying. She knew she saw right through it. And she had a serious look of concern you know, as she was talking and she got, there was nothing I said that was a bridge too far for her. She was just a regular lady that came up to me and just, you know, just out of concern because she's still a human. Whereas like so many people were probably looking at, Oh, who's the, who's the outlier? Why is she trying to bring her children in there? Is she trying to kill them? You know, mm. <laughs> yeah, that's like it's dangerous or something. And, um, and we talked and, and it just was really reassuring because a lot of people, like anybody that I've stopped and had a long conversation with, for the most part, everybody knows something's up. 
Um, and, and she had a mask and she says she wears it sometimes. She just, well, not everybody is uh, bold enough to take a stand visibly, right. but a lot of people know, uh, know better. And she was somebody who, if it came down to it, you know, if it came to her door, she would take a stand, but she didn't mind, you know, blending in. With it. Plus it's inconvenient if you're being forced to wear a mask to go in somewhere. But like I said, Menards is the only one doing that. And they're a pretty local or regional company. I don't think that there's Menards, you know, in most of the country. It's just like a probably an Indiana or Midwest thing. And they have and they're small. They're not like Lowe's. Mm -hmm. Lowe's isn't doing any of that madness. But Menards No, is, Lowe's hasn't done that. Yeah, Lowe's uh, is just fact, trying Lowe's the best is letting to stay open. People Right. And I've seen them let people in with, you know, without masks, with no issue. Uh, yeah, I think they're yeah. still asking people to socially distance. But again, yeah. you know, that stuff is funny, too, because the person you're with, you're not going to socially distance from them. So you still yeah. have people going together as couples doing stuff. And that's why I said there's nothing normal about this. And we need to keep pointing when people say, because remember, this is what the devil did all the way back in the garden. You will not surely die. Right. Add yeah. a word to what the Lord said. They, yeah. they come in and they call things other than what they are. It's yeah. like abortion. No, it's baby murder, but they yeah. call it abortion. <laughs> they change. They change the language. So we have to say back. No, this is not normal. We know what normal is. This is not normal. Yeah, it's abnormal. Yeah. It's abnormal. And we need to I keep did. I literally saying it. said that. To my pharmacist because he was like because i said oh you're saying because it's almost like the the restrictions are getting worse even though they're technically lifting everything so uh, i walked in and, and it said um you know no more than one adult per household and i mentioned to my pharmacist who's like a nice guy i was like yeah so how's it been for you guys and uh oh i see you got a new policy he goes yeah he goes uh, and you know i think uh, i think it's a you know it's not a bad thing it's probably a good idea and then I was like, mm, I didn't say anything <laughs> at the time. And then when he said to me, I'm like, yeah, you know, it's the new normal. I was like, no, the new abnormal, <laughs> you know, because I wasn't going to let him normalize it to me or to himself because it's not normal. And I'm not going to let, you know, I'm going to, uh, you don't want to reinforce that when people right. say things like that. You, you want to, you want to make sure you don't give them that social validation that, oh yeah, right. you're right. And that's, that's what everyone is doing. They're all yeah, saying yeah. the same thing. Reminds me of the uh, old, remember the old hamburger commercial? Body same snatching. place, same thing. Well, the same place, same thing. We're always just doing the same thing. And everybody's just following everybody else until mm. somebody gets a bright idea to try a different restaurant kind of thing. Yeah. Well, it's, oh. it's, it's kind of the same thing that they're doing. It's like a Jedi mind trick. They move mm -hmm. the goalpost 98 yards and we've never had a discussion about whether or not we should, let alone, you know, the A or B choice that they give you. Right. Right. It's well, and now it's weird because they've made it so readily apparent to everybody. I mean, even like Tucker Carlson. I mean, so many people are talking about about how this is like, you know, pretty much a big joke. And yet, I don't know. It's like it, it's like it took a while for the, the trickle down effect or for people to actually start wearing masks and and, you know, reacting to this whole coronavirus thing and now it's mm -hmm. going to take a take a minute for you to see people in public you know reacting to the fact that supposedly they're they're lifting restrictions or reopening whatever that means i mean as far as i can tell the only things that were closed here were like goodwill which is awful because i love goodwill and also when people have no money you know mm. most people at least they close the goodwills but um for the most part it was just the smaller stores like the you know, mm -hmm. the little boutiques and stuff that were closed here. I never saw any substantial lessening of people out in public, you know, and, and anywhere you could go, everybody was just cramming in there. Right. So right. it's like such a joke to even claim that the policies and the, the shutdowns had some effect where it flattened the curve because, you know, it, uh, you know, maybe in a few population centers, there was a substantial difference, maybe in California and New York. But uh, for the most of the country, I'm sure it was just like here where, you know, lo the local government didn't have the cojones to, to and didn't personally didn't have any reason to want to inconvenience themselves by really, you know, being hard on everybody and really turning everything upside down. I know in a few places like Michigan that happened, but, you know, and the, the cops here, you know, the, the first time I've seen 
any cop do anything was the other day. And I, I don't even know if, if what was happening. Like I, I perceived, I thought he was stopping a couple because they were walking, they were sitting in a park that was mm-hmm. closed, but cause he was walking up to him. But as I drove away, I realized that they were, they were on a sidewalk, the same as all these other people walking, you know, taking mm-hmm. a stroll. So I don't really know why he would have been, unless you're not allowed to, <laughs> they weren't sitting. So, but that was the first time I'd seen anybody do anything our cops had pretty much they had even kind of announced that they weren't gonna be participating in this parade Mm. so that gave me hope but see that's the thing is there was no (laughs) yeah our cops here are pretty uh are pretty cool actually um they're uh you know they have they're a little too hard on like the meth heads and stuff you know they they go a little too uh they they they, you know they, they like to make busts and really ruin people's lives and set up stings you know, trying to get people goodwill? yoked up. Yeah, at they first, set the, up the, uh, for meth, meth users at the Goodwill. Oh no! <laughs> oh, I think that that's no. what that most of their their employees are good are are, are recovered uh, meth addicts and uh, and teenagers. But um, you know, I don't like seeing cops setting up stings and stuff. People doing drugs. It's just not right. Like it's a trap, man. It's it's, a trap. it doesn't help anything. And they got one of my friends who she's a really good person, but she wouldn't narc out this. Uh, uh, black gay guy actually that she grew up with and was like really close friends with. They wanted him, her to narc him out. She was not a dealer or even a heavy user, and she's a really wonderful person. But she refused to 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 set him up. So they ended up a single mom putting her in jail for like six months. Mm. But other than that, they're really cool. Uh, and um, they, uh, I, they this just watching this has made me realize that the majority of the country has literally no incentive to cooperate Mm -hmm. for any length of time. It's just about when do you feel it? The people still cooperating, it's Mm -hmm. because they haven't felt it yet. It hasn't cost them anything. You know, everybody has a different threshold. But the idea, you know, and in California, you know, it's surprise. I don't know. I, 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 my impression would be that everybody's a little bit more obedient in California, but I'm sure that's not actually true. They have had some protests out here, and yeah, where they, Beach. the uh, they got out and went in with the up up to the governor's mansion there, and there were yep. some several a uh, couple of gentlemen with bullhorns, and they actually you know told the police, hey, look, you know, you need to make a choice right now, which side you're going to be on. Are you going to honor your oath? I mean, it was, a, it was a pretty good video. It's it's up oh, on YouTube. Well, it's been up for that. a couple uh, like about a day and a half now, and. Uh, they they confronted the police because I I've, I've said to people I mean are you comfortable with this are you comfortable with seeing police on and you can't identify them because they have on these masks yep. I mm-hmm. said don't you understand what you're looking at you're looking mm-hmm. at them conditioning you that this is okay well yep. truth, and yeah truth in plain sight there's a, a show I forget which one of the Netflix or Hulu or one of those called The Watchmen. And it's a futuristic dystopian kind of uh, story. And in that, all the police wear masks, all of them. Mm-hmm. So that you can't be recognized when you arrest someone for doing something, you know, uh, against the uh, big brother. Right. That's truth in place. Ben, are you there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Ben is there. He's probably eating some ice cream yeah. or t- drinking some coffee. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> no, no, you guys have uh, you guys covered the subject well. Um, I'm just listening in. Well, Ben, that's too bad because now that you you've moved back towards the microphone, I think this is a good shi- uh, time to shift into uh, Brother Ben's topic this evening that he wanted to cover because wow. all of this stuff seems to kind of fit in with what he wanted to talk about, which is uh, mystery Babylon and and future Israel. And if anything seems mm. Babylonian. It's all this stuff that's going on, but go ahead, Brother Ben. Well, yeah, I mean, y- y- you mentioned earlier that we, we talked about uh, the number of the beast, and um, and then Angel mentioned uh, the, the uh, Galatians were uh, preaching a false gospel. Um, yeah, and I, I did it on about, Friday. Uh, yeah, what's that? That you was Friday. Post- I did. Oh, oh I, I posted did. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a li- yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyways, I, um, to say, I, I was just to say that uh, you know, th- Paul said that you know, if he or an angel from heaven to gave you any other gospel, and part of his mm-hmm. gospel was not do not take the mark of the beast. That was no mention at all. That angel uh, was a message to the world, unbelieving world, 
the land dweller, so yeah. to speak, and it's a law, and we're not under the law whatsoever. So um, the uh, that warning about mark mark of the beast again, it's a, it's a mark in the flesh. I mean, I think it's a distinction we should all should always keep in mind is that uh, our flesh is crucified and, and dead to the world. We're dead to the world and it to us. So uh, we're not associated with whatsoever. But anyways, um, regards to Mystery Babylon, um, this is something I just been personally been putting together recently. Um, and it, it just seems so clear to me now. Um, and I'm not, mm -hmm. some of the stuff is not things I've heard people say before. Um, and one of the points of evidence I would really point to is, um, uh, well, for example, in, uh, revelation 11, I think it's 11, eight. Um, yeah. Revelation 11, eight talks about the two witnesses and it says, and their bodies the, and their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city. And again, Babylon's always referred to as that great city. Uh, Nineveh was referred to as that great city. So these are all types, I believe, for Mystery Babylon, which I, I'm convinced is Israel. And anyway, so, so it says, there, and their dead bodies will lie in the street of that great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So right there, you're already seeing uh, Sodom in Egypt being associated with uh, Jerusalem. In Peter um, 5, he talks about that he was writing his epistle from Babylon. And I think, I think, I think you studied the, the circumstantial evidence. It, it's pretty clear that he was in, he was actually in Jerusalem when he wrote it. And then, um, and when, when I was reading Genesis 11 about tower Babel, I just saw parallel, parallel after pa parallel about, um, the tower of Babel being a picture of Jerusalem. So for example, um, in, uh, in the tower episode in, in Genesis 11, um, it talks about how they wanted to make a name themselves and they're trying to build a tower. Well, the Jews of Jesus' day also attempted to establish, build, quote unquote, their own name for themselves or their own righteousness, which they thought would grant them access to heaven. Mm -hmm. Um, just like in Tower of Babel, they they said, Let us make a name for ourselves. And by making a name for themselves, uh, they thought they would escape the judgment by attempting to be godlike. Um, in the, the Tower of Babel episode, but also the Jews, they thought that they could escape judgment be, be, by becoming godlike, which they thought the law uh, granted them or made them godlike, and they they thought they looked down at everyone else that you know, oh, God gave us uh, us the law, but no one else, so uh, we're, we're godlike, and everyone else is just you know, they're animals. Um, and so they have it. They uh, wanted to establish themselves uh, in their own name and not in God's name. And we know that God's name, you know, is Christ. So they, again, they're trying to tap themselves up their own name. They had their own city um, in Genesis 11, just like Jerusalem talks about. In Hebrews uh, 13, 4 talks about we have no continuing city, um, earthly city. Um, and that city is, is like the temple or a platform or, or a tower. And Jesus prophesied that he would be destroyed Uh that I'm sorry, Jesus prophesied that he, not only his body would be destroyed, but also that temple would be destroyed, and he likened that temple to his own body of flesh. Um, so it also too is that you know uh, in the Tower of Babel incident, God came down from heaven, just like Christ came down from heaven, and he yeah. spoke judgment to the people. And uh, Christ spoke in parables, which was a confusing tongue to his enemies, the outsiders, if you will, unbelievers and yeah. Christ's teachings, um, his words, his language. Um, so Christ teachings, uh, his language, his words have gone out all through all the earth, just like the languages were dispersed at Babel, went all throughout all the earth. Christ's teachings have gone out through all the earth. And um, the Jews after AD 70 AD were, you know, pretty much scattered across all the nations, just like the, uh, the people were at the Tower of Babel were scattered from, from that location through all the earth. Um, and also too, that Jesus said that, you know, you know, again, scattering is a major theme in the tower of Babel incident and the Jews were scattered into all the nations. And Jesus himself said that, you know, who is not gathered with me will be scattered abroad. Just like yeah. the tower of Babel incident. Um, let's see here. Um, oh, and, and also too, in the, uh, but tower of Babel incident, their, their rebellion was in relation to God's command to be fruitful and multiply and fill, and fill, and fill the earth. Um, and again, they, 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 that was a direct rebellion against that command. They wanted to come together and make a name for themselves and not fill the earth. That was, they explicitly said that. Um, and 
you know, Israel's past failure to receive Christ and their current rebellion. So th their past failure to receive Christ and their current future rebellion, I believe in, in um, well, even now, for example, will certainly be uh, re in relation to, to disobedience in, in respect to the belief in the gospel. So the, in the gospel, what, it, what the gospel gives you spiritual, gives you spiritual fruitfulness uh, and, and that message, uh, it multiplies, you know, um, the new believers and it, the, the new believers, uh, the people who are born again, will fill the earth. So again, their, their rebellion was, their spiritual rebellion was, is they didn't want to come to Christ so they might have life and spiritually multiply, and that, which will ultimately fill the new earth. And so again, that's a major par parallel. Um, let me see one other thing here. Oh, uh, the events of Pentecost where people were of different languages had come to Jerusalem and believed the gospel and all were they were all prophesizing. So it's almost a reversal of Babylon where they are now coming together and speaking a common language, a spiritual language, um, that, that, which is the gospel. And their native tongue was telegraphing that Christ came to reverse the, the judgment of Babel spiritually. And um, so, again, if you look at that, I think you see many parallels in Genesis 11. And again, that was on a city in Babel. And I believe that Jerusalem is will be that future point of rebellion. And I'm sure there's many other parallels, but I, I just wonder what you guys thought about that. Awesome. There's a lot there. Oh, I totally agree. Uh, I'll let somebody else go first because I, I have quite a bit oh. to say, but yeah, I totally agree. One thing I, one, one thing I want to say, you mentioned the Tower of Babel. They wanted to rush the throne of God. They actually, mm -hmm. they actually wanted to, they thought they could build a tower high enough. I mean, all the reasons you mentioned are, I, I'm not disagreeing with anything you said, Benham, but one of the other things they wanted to do was get so high up there to and and try to rush the throne. Right. Yeah, they said, <laughs> come, let us build build ourselves a city. Again, the, in fact, they, uh, Jesus even said that uh, the builders who rejected the cornerstone. Yeah. Uh, again, that's what all Freemasonry is about, too. You, I think we all know that, but we they, have, they have their masonry, that stone. They have their, uh, what do they call that? Uh, what's the thing they used to uh, in masonry? Uh, to uh, or would you lay brick? Would you would you lay brick? That what's that instrument called? The something. Uh, trowel, 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 trowel. Oh, okay. Thank you. And, and and by the way, that's one of the way. Seeing that that uh, symbology of trowel and and uh, brickwork and stone and cement and all that kind of binding stuff that they talk about. Once you once you understand that you, again, the Bible is the Rosetta Stone for understanding. I believe our reality. And also decoding what the other side believes. And again, they have that they have a tr they have trowels and and also too is that it helped me crack the code with the uh, which the uh, the um, eight man so so called conspiracy. They have a trowel. It's archaeology. They they're always digging in the dirt with trowels. Um, it, you'll if you study that out, you'll see all kinds of parallels to Freemasonry. Um, so yeah, I, I totally believe that uh, future Jerusalem will be. Um, the, uh, it has aspects of Sodom and Gomorrah. It has aspects of Egypt. Um, it's you know it's a house of bondage. Um, you know I, I think it's it's the place of every wicked thing that you know. And, and Lisa, you said too that um, you said this last night, I believe, where the worst sin in the world was not necessarily that you could killing God Christ, but was to disbelieve Him. And when there's yeah. no disbelief of Christ, I mean, just imagine every wicked thing that just has free free reign in that area you know um mm -hmm. and I, I i just i think it just it also too i remember paula said last night sin begets sin so i mean it's just a it's just uh, i think you're just gonna see uh that it's the apex or the culmination of every evil thing that ever was and i think that's part of the reason why they received uh so much condemnation in the end i i i that's a fascinating idea uh ben and i have no reason to disagree with you uh, that it's that it's uh, Jerusalem or uh, uh, in Israel. Um, I, I I know one thing though. There are a lot of people, especially on YouTube, a lot of people that say that God gave them a dream, and and they they say that it's uh, that America is Babylon. And I don't understand how they can possibly say that when there are so many other. The whole focus of Revelation that that period of time is on the Middle East. It, it, it's all about the Middle East. So 
though I don't know it's in Israel. I, th I think that Saudi Arabia, I actually heard someone talking about this recently. Um, Saudi Arabia is uh, building, uh, they're trying to build an island. I forget what the island's name is, but they're trying to build a great city uh, that is state of the art. Um, now this would take them many, many years to, to make this happen. I think that all the stuff's coming closer, but I don't know. It could be, um, but anyway, whether it's in Israel or whether it's in, uh, some Island, uh, close to Saudi Arabia or where, wherever it is, it's not, it's not in America. I get so frustrated with people trying to say that America is, uh, Babylon the great. Um, yeah. also there's the idea that it's not just the, the city itself, but it's the whole idea of a network of, of people, you know, the whole market, oh, yeah. the whole, uh, the whole beast system that it's, that it's pretty widespread, but, but in scripture, there's some, there's some pretty convincing, um, verses that talk about it being an actual city, not a, not a, not just a network, but an actual place. And what you're talking about where the witnesses, their bodies lay in the street, People will see that all over the world, and they even said that it even says that they'll have a a, a day of celebration where they give each other gifts and whatnot. Right. Um, right. That's huge, man. That's absolutely huge. Well, uh, if I could interrupt for a second, yeah, Sister yeah. Renee in the chat pointed out something that's very interesting. She said the the synagogue of Satan, uh, their faith came directly from original Babylon. And if you uh, understand the origins yep. of the Babylonian Talmud, uh, yep. <laughs> that was yeah, a very that was good what I was going to say, Renee. Very mm -hmm. good. Yep. Yep. That's exactly what I was going to say. That was, that was one of the ways that it hit me. And a lot of the other things that like, okay, like the Catholic church, the Vatican, that's like the daughter of, 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 you know, of the harlot, the daughter of Babylon. Right. But there, it could never be these um, offshoots. It had to be the original uh, woman who betrayed her vows to God, that would be the Thank harlot you. or Babylon. It could never Thank be, you. you know, yeah. And, and and that she was the only one that had the vows to betray. And and also, you know, um, it, it's just, it's clear that, that it's it, the way that uh, Satan, you know, mocks everything of God, right? The, the Antichrist will go first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles, his ministry, so to speak. So I believe that he will um, team up with uh, unbelieving Israel uh, and uh, basically they will uh, rule and reign together for a short time. Uh, and during that time, she will uh, really uh, turn the whole world against her because she will be so excessive in her oppression and basically just so indulgent, right? And then I believe when the Antichrist declares himself to be God, because if you understand the, the Talmudic prophecies, they think that their Moshiach is like a, is just a man. They think he's just a man who's like a political leader and um, that they're all gods, that that's the truth. The truth is that, that they, each Jew is, is a God uh, in and of itself and that we're to worship them as, as God, the Gentiles. And so when he sits down and he declares himself to be God, that's when the, 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 the schism between uh, Israel and the Antichrist appears, and I believe he throws her off his back and sticks the Gentile world on her. And they will be very happy to oblige at that point because she will have been so indulgent in her excesses uh, against the Gentiles. Because, um, you know, the Talmudic prophecies believe that, we'll each, that they will each have, what is it, 2,000 Gentile slaves? Uh, it, uh, it, it's some of those 2,000 or 4,000, but that's what we were created for, according to the Talmud, is that we were created to be their slaves. Yeah. And um, that's the, the worldview that's motivating all of this. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's so evil, but I do think that Satan likes to set, set up his, uh, his prey for a big fall. So build them up with all this Talmudism, which tells them that they're divine and they're like the stuff that it says in the Talmud about the Jews is so ridiculous. It's like it's like I can see Satan just sitting there, like yeah, yeah, yeah tell him that, tell him that, but like basically just build them up to this point. Their head is just huge, yeah. and then watch them fall down. 
and I, I, I believe that uh, that the remnant will be shared when Christ returns, uh, mm-hmm. roughly. Now, I, and and I, I tend to think with the new world order that we're primed to expect. Um, I think that there's going to be like a twofold thing, right? So I think there's going to be this age where where all the world turns its worship towards Israel. I think it's going to be kind of like a more of a theocracy. And then I think that there's going to be this age of the Gentiles briefly, very briefly, maybe, maybe not even hardly get off the ground, but it seems to me that there, that there's like two different things that are, that are coming, like two different forms of this world order. Right. But I just think that Antichrist has to invert or mock Christ's ministry by going to the Jews and then the Gentiles. And, um, and I, to me, it was just really, when I first got saved, I remember um, thinking, wait a minute, why doesn't anybody say that Israel is Babylon, you know, and uh, or mystery Babylon or I, I just didn't understand. It seemed really obvious to me from the Bible. And um, when I but I was new and so I decided, well, there's got to be a good reason. So, there, you know, there's got to be a good reason. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, somebody's already somebody's explained why it can't be Israel. And I'm just I'm just not aware of it yet. And so I just kind of discounted it. Um, but it was I think God showed me right away. And um, then, you know, people saying it's America. I mean, how self-centered <laughs> and myopic. Right. Like, right? it's ridiculous. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. All this. I don't believe it's going to be something where it was, you know, some brand new invention that it, that's not doesn't bring everything full circle. It mm. goes, you know, right back to the beginning. If it's if it's if it's Israel, but it also people don't see it because they think, well, wait a minute, that doesn't sound like Israel, you know. Uh, they think that uh, yeah. um, Israel isn't that powerful. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Yeah, exactly, Jason. That's what the Greater Israel Project is all about. Yeah. And they have to bring all the Jews to fulfill their prophecies. They have to all go back to the land, and that's part of why I think Adam Green exists. I believe that they want the Gentiles to rise up against them to some extent in order to drive them to motivate the Jews to go back to Israel, to go to Israel in the first place. They haven't been there. Right. So uh, it seems like that's what they're trying to do. And um, they, 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 because there's not a lot of reason in their Talmudic prophecies. Now I'm not talking about whether they're the true Jews. I'm not even talking right. about, you know, any, I'm talking about what they think is going to happen and what they're trying to make happen. The Jews and who they, say believe, they are, but are not. Well, Angel, right. like you're def- and- I think you're definitely onto something. And there's a, a thing called, I think it's called uh, I Am Israel or something like that. And it, it's got like the all-seeing eye in it. And it's basically a, it's a, it's a invitation to Jews to come to the land. And it's basically just uh, utter debauchery. They pay for drugs. And it's about hooking up with other Israelites and, and you know, having children. And it, it's I've got to big- tell you something about my ex-husband before we get off this subject. You guys okay, go okay. Off, I, I want to say thing. one little thing. I want to say one little thing. So there's a big movement to get everyone to get them drawn back. And there's like... Basically, yeah. you know, drug fueled orgies or whatever. Um, and it, yeah. if you look at the, the symbology for it, it's got like a triangle, it's all seeing eye in it and everything. It's just really weird. Um, yeah, I, th- I forget the name of it, but um, the other thing too is that I mentioned last week, I'm again, uh, I'm convinced that 1948 was fulfilled prophecy. Uh, and they are, and I mentioned before that there's a number of prophecies to talk about. There, there's a two phased gathering, the initial phase is in unbelief, mm-hmm. and the initial phase, I, I failed to mention this last time, it talks about. That they're only going to occupy part of the land, but the but the final fulfillment they're going to uh, occupy the full original uh, land covenant that God gave, uh, which Israel. is huge, which is which is huge, huge. correct? Yeah. And and so that's one thing I would ask you guys is that uh, one thing that keeps me from thinking that we're too, you know I think we're pretty close to the end, but I don't think like it's imminent necessarily. Right, right. it is because it talks about Israel. Uh, you know, being that great city and that, it, you know, it's basically the center exactly. of the world, it almost sounds like. And I don't exactly. see that grandeur at this point right now, but I see it's it. It's secret. I think it's, not yet. It's secret. Yeah, that, yeah but it's not point. widely known. They don't, but we, it has to be widely known because people are going to marvel when she falls. But most people nowadays, they don't even, they don't realize how powerful Israel is already. So oh, I know they're powerful. Does, but I, no, yeah, but, but most people, no, no, no. But I'm saying that because most people don't realize it, it yeah. can't, it, there has to be more time. Because it's going to be apparent to everybody at that time when she falls that that she was very powerful, <laughs> right? So it, it, it can't. She has soft power right now, secret power. Uh, yeah, that she's yeah, exactly, exactly. So I, it, like, uh, 
like Abu Dhabi, you know, like that's like our uh, Dubai that has just grandiose, you know, tennis courts on top of, you know, you know, mm-hmm. it just ridiculous architecture. Yeah. Like that. I'm oh, not saying yeah. it has to be that way. I'm not saying it has to be that way, but that's kind of how I envision it to think that, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's almost like a centerpiece of the world where everyone wants to go there or trade with exactly. it. Or, so, yeah. Um, but go ahead with your other story if you want um, with your ex. Well, Lisa, do you have anything more? To, I just was going to give an aside real quick about my ex-husband uh, is Israel. Well, he was born in Moldova, and then, but his mom was a Jew. So she, when he was uh, 18 or before he was 18, she decided to move to Israel, but had to forfeit their citizenship, uh, Moldovan citizenship. And so he was forced to move to Israel with her and go in the army and everything, the IDF. And he absolutely hates Israel, and um, he he hate he he is just he told me so many things you know that the wicked things that he had to participate in the IDF. And um, but here's the thing though is Reese, now he's not a conspiracy theorist like at all. His name's Vadim, and um, he recently contacted me, you know, which doesn't happen that often. He he never spoke really good English. We were married because we were dating. And I was very stupid and I decided that I didn't want to break up with him because he was going to have to, he forfeited his little uh, Dead Sea cosmetics job in the mall by dating me because it's like against their rules, which is weird. And uh, he didn't want citizenship here. He actually wanted Russian citizenship, but we were dating and I didn't want him to get deported. So we got married when I I was like 20. It was very dumb. But um, so it's not a real husband. It's like a boyfriend that I got married to, which was obviously very not not a, not a good practice i realized that but anyway he contacted me this was like you know over 10 years ago that we were mm-hmm. married and uh, he contacted me saying this is so crazy but he said uh he was desperate because he knew i knew about some of this stuff and he now keep in mind this is he's an atheist and he doesn't mm-hmm. believe any of this stuff all mm-hmm. right but he realized that he was actually under some type of electronic harassment and that he was a targeted individual. He didn't even know that was a thing. Mm. And um, and that he also believed that he was perhaps mind controlled. The more we talked, the more he uh, revealed like that he felt that his, his family was p- basically part of Mossad. And that they're doing something to him and he doesn't know why. And he was very scared and even actually <laughs> wanted to hear about Jesus. Um, and he told me that... Uh, there's just things going on in Israel that I can't imagine right now. And there's that the, there are actually, you know, uh, he, he doesn't know what he knows that makes them need to uh, that want to control him or harass him. Uh, he hasn't been talking about any of this stuff. He's not a conspiracy theorist, but he hinted at he told me that he didn't want to even tell me what he thought it could be because he didn't want me to know about it because he didn't want me to be in danger. But mm. uh, this was a few months ago and I want everybody to, to pray for him. His name is Vadim, and he really was. This he's not crazy. He's not. He's very. Uh, what's Russian. his name? Uh, what's his name again, Vadim, sister? V a d i m. And um, okay. yeah, and he. But basically, uh, you know, his mother. He he feels she signed him up for some sort of program when he was a kid, and that he was put through things, and he didn't even know about this stuff. All he knew was that I had told him about my friend Jay Lynn, who he knew. And so it, it rang a bell, uh, you know, when all this started happening to him, but basically they're, they're, they're doing things like basically they have this ability to hit, you know, basically beam things at him. He thinks, cause he's a robotics engineer. So he's very smart. He knows about all this stuff. They, and they do, um, they do have that. I don't want to interrupt you. Yeah. They do have that. No, they do. Yeah. Right. It makes him say things like, oh, you know, like they can make him like, you know, shout things out at rant, like almost like have Tourette's yeah. all of a sudden and all this stuff. And um, uh, anyway, I, the reason I just bring that up is whatever's going on in Israel. I mean, you know, it, it seems like everything is the pressure's on and they're doing this to I mean, they're really trying to ratchet down their control, not only across the world, but their own people. I mean, look at what they've done during the shutdown they've got it worse than almost anybody. So as wicked as the, um, the Talmudists are as wicked as, you know, um, the leaders are, uh, we have to remember that, that there's a lot of people in Israel that are just, just regular people. And they, you know, they really like a lot of people actually are wondering now if, if somehow Jews are just 
predisposed to be just like evil. You know, people are really thinking that because of this, this Zionist agenda. And it's not true. All right. It's not true. But I under, I do think that Satan has made them the app. They're like the apple of his eye right now. Not really. But that, you know, that's not a good thing to be the apple of Satan's eye. But basically, he, um, he has a purpose for them. And so I do think that it, like anybody that's an unbeliever is subject to spiritual uh, the demonic influence for sure. But um, I, I think that perhaps the reason we see so many, uh, it's almost like, like, like the rabbis and so many different Jewish people behind things. And you wonder like, could they all just be cognizantly in on this agenda? I don't know. I think that Satan actually has, you know, dispatched spirits and the spirit of Antichrist, perhaps, to to like to, to get to influence uh, the Jews to behave and to act in in, the, in his interests in, in a way where they don't actually all know consciously that they're part of a conspiracy. You see what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. it, it's it's especially the rabbis and the and the people that are very religious. Um, I it, that's so I don't think it's like that all Jews are, are evil or that they're all in on some cognizant conspiracy. That's, that's uh, not how it works. But I do think that they are subject to spirits. And uh, I've seen that very real in my own life. So, um, but, you know, and I was married to an Israeli. So uh, my, my, my belief that Israel is, uh, you know, Babylon is not uh, motivated by any type of anti-Semitic feelings. Right. Uh, it's just reality. It's just, you know, uh, Vadim would tell you himself uh, everything that he saw there and how ashamed he is to even be Israeli because of the stuff he was witness to. And wow. um, yeah, but anyway, uh, Lisa, I'm really uh, wanting to hear what you have to say. Now, I just would like prayers for Vadim because I haven't talked to him since I had the baby. So that's what I was thinking about him. Definitely uh, will be praying for Vadim. Uh, yeah, no, I think we all agree that uh, it certainly is not all of the Jewish people. It is a select group that has decided to do this undertaking yep. and are in agreement with this stuff. So, no, it's not all. We know that it's not all Jewish people. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, I, I really don't have anything to add to what you guys have. In fact, I'm going to have to look in. I know I'm cognizant of the concept of the greater Israel. I was aware there is a project called the Greater Israel Project because a lot of different Christian Zionist uh, channels have been promoting that. Right. So I was aware of it, but I haven't like looked into it and read up on it myself other than what they say about it. So I'm going to refrain from making comment because I don't know how much of it is accurate, how much of it is hype versus where they may really be with that. But I, I, I do understand everything that you guys are saying. And uh, I don't think that you guys were inaccurate <laughs> in in your descriptions about uh, what you talked about. Brother uh, Cripps, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, uh, except to say that um, I don't know how all this is going to going to take place and uh, who who the true Israel is. Uh, I know that there are imposters in that area right now. I, I firmly believe that. Um and I, the the whole concept, I just wanted to say briefly that what what uh, Angel's talking about, um, I've actually looked into that a little bit about this. Uh, I forget what they call it, but this technology where they can uh, they can be close to an individual and gang stalking. And, yeah, well, the gang stalking, uh, yeah. it, it's wrapped up in the same thing. But I mean, the okay. technology to beam um, voices into people's heads. This is something. Voice skull. Voice and skull technology. Yeah, voice. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I couldn't think of it. Um, there have been people, in, in fact, one of these uh, recent shootings, uh, these these people that uh, have done the shootings that are at, that actually did happen, um, they, they say some weird things. And they, they say, uh, you know, voice, the voice told me to do it. And it's very specific of what things they've been said mm-hmm. uh, that, that has they hear in their head. And you can say, oh, yeah, it's mental illness. It's always mental illness that's mm-hmm. to blame. Um, but there's some there's some proof uh, uh, from witnesses that have seen this technology being used, you know, whistleblowers out there. So I do believe it exists. It is possible that it happens. Um, 
so uh, I just wanted to add some validity to uh, the the one part of what Angel was saying, uh, the 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 gang stalking and the uh, the skull uh, voice to skull technology. Um, it does exist. Uh, it sounds crazy, uh, but it's not. It's, no, it's I remember crazy. people talking about it. I think, if I'm correct, Son of Sam, I think he mm. claimed that. Yeah. From uh, yeah. you know some of these people that did killings way back. We're talking about what? That's Late seventies, early eighties. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I I don't doubt you guys at all. I mean, there have been people. I remember people complaining probably sometime in the 80s about how their feelings would, they yeah. could hear radio broadcasts and stuff uh, through their feelings. <laughs> They'd have to go yeah. get their feelings removed from the mercury feelings to the composites mm -hmm. once that became available because they couldn't take it. They could actually hear radio broadcasts and other interference <laughs> in their mouth from their teeth. Yep. Mm -hmm. That will drive a person crazy. Oh yeah, for sure. Mm. For sure. So yeah, no, you guys are not, not making that up. And and listen, they have stuff we don't hear, we don't even knew about. You know, going way back. I remember somebody telling me over thirty years ago, "Be careful what you say on a landline." Mm -hmm. Okay, over thirty years ago, be careful what you say on the phone <laughs> because the they had. I I remember seeing it. I don't know if it was in a movie. Uh, I think it was in a movie where somebody had said they could call at that time back in the seven in the seventies or maybe even the sixties. They could call you on the phone. Your house phone would ring. You might pick it up and say hello, hello, and they didn't say anything. And you hang it up, and it became a hot mic. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about that. He said they said, "Why do you think that they have such excellent?" Uh, microphones and receivers in those phones mm -hmm. and the, the capability that they laid what back I think in the 20s or may, maybe even a little before that mm -hmm. the cables to go overseas for the phone calls and stuff I mean so they've had technology that I, I, I saw a video just a couple of months ago I shared with a brother of mine where they had a diesel truck that had a phone in it in the 40s a yeah. telephone. Yeah. <laughs> the, listen, the technology that that they actually show us. Okay, I'll give you an example. That that robot or AI robot, Sophia or whatever it was. If that's what they're showing us, and it, it's kind of clunky, you know, it's like it's just the, like a it was originally just a torso sitting on a on a on a desk, you know, and and kind of mechanical and weird. The eyes looked weird and. It, it, it it was weird, the whole thing. That's mm -hmm. the only word I can think of. If that's what they're showing us, that means that they are far advanced. Mm -hmm. They have something that's that that's way more technologically advanced. They do not show us all the stuff. They show us a little bit of it, and they they they, it, you know, it's truth in plain sight. Sometimes that means that they're further along. When people talk about AI and oh, AI is going to do this, and AI is going to do that what they're willing to show us about how far they've come, that means that they're probably 10, 20 years more advanced uh, yeah. than, than they're showing. They, they don't divulge information uh, to the public. They give you a little bit so that they, they can start to prepare you for what's coming. Um, but a lot of the stuff could be a lot quicker than it, that it would seem. I mean, we think, Oh, well, they're, they don't have the technology really for the digital currency and the, mark of the beast yet well um things change pretty quick with the way technology is going that's all i'm saying yeah i remember somebody telling me around the year 2000 right after y2k that where technology used to take them like every 10 years to double that they had gotten yeah. it down at that time this was 20 years ago mm -hmm. to every 18 months the technology was actually doubling yeah yeah it's a law called moore's mm -hmm. law Look at the iPhone. Right. See, I would not, I, I have an Android, and not because I hate iPhone or anything, but with, with an iPhone, they come out with a new iPhone. You know, you spend all this money, thousand <laughs> dollars on an iPhone, and then the next year, yep, an iPhone not me. Outdated, they, no, not me. They, they have, they have the, uh, another one that's got, well, it's got a bigger screen or takes pictures better or whatever. They're constantly making these upgrades 
So to, to me, to, to spend the money on an iPhone, the next year they're going to have another one. But look at the attitude of people that buy those things. I mean, I don't, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not, no, not everybody, right. Picture. Some um, of the people. But yeah. on Facebook, they, they, they show it. Like they show the box and the phone's not, look what I just got. I just got the newest. Oh, it's a cult. It's a cult. Thank you. Consumer. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. It's consumer. Brand, watch this now. Brand. It's like they're a cult of a brand on top of it. And a right. brand is a mark. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, not to, not to mention the obvious. I mean, it's a, a Apple with a bite out of it. The first uh, mm-hmm. Apple was sold at six hundred sixty-six dollars. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, sixty-six what, cents. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the Sister. guys is a, uh, one of the guys is absolutely a Freemason. I forgot his name. Uh, Wozniak. Steve Wozniak. Wozniak. The guy who invented it. He's a Freemason. I, I think the stories are completely invented. You know, oh, you know, they try to make. Thank you. I was going to ask you about that. Own a garage. <laughs> you know, anyone can rise up to this level. It's the American dream. Yeah. yeah, not. Mm-hmm. I don't even think. Part. I don't even think that. I think those are just front stories. Yeah. What is actually mm-hmm. corp? Uh, the government controls these big giant corporations. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. I yeah. Can't prove exactly. it, but that's my suspicion. If you wanted to, at some point, you could do a whole show on all the symbology that's out there. Uh, that and the fact that, that seven corporations own it all. Exactly. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> speaking of which, I mean, through, uh, I think uh, this stuff you guys are it's kind of old news, but. Um, you know that the Facebook logo is the Tubal Cain oh, yeah. uh, uh, logo, basically. And yeah. um, it, this is a known, this is the school of fact. DARPA, who started the Internet Defense uh, Research Project, something or other agency, mm. um, I think they invented the Internet. I think they invented email, TCP IP, which is the protocol that uh, the Internet is run on. Um, they had a project was called <laughs> Life Log, L I F E L O G. It's called mm. LifeLog, and they wanted a, every they wanted to create a service where everyone would voluntarily divulge all their details of their life. It's like track people and manipulate people, etc. Et the day that project officially closed was the day Facebook uh, became uh, went, went on the market. I mean, it's obvious that that that's yep. it was a DARPA project. Um, yep. Mm. Facebook or FBI book? Oops, did I say that all out? He <laughs> uh, <laughs> did. <laughs> okay. I am astonished at the information that people will put up on Facebook. All I do is put up like scriptures or videos of stuff that I find interesting or even right. just stuff to make people think. Yeah. But I can't remember. I, I remember when I first downloaded and made the mistake of putting Facebook, the app on my phone, and it snatched all of my contacts. I was furious because they started. I started seeing how they were, they would make suggestions on people that I wasn't friends with on Facebook. And I said, wait a minute, this person's in my contact list. And this one's, and I was like, when did I get, I like, I didn't even, didn't know anything at that time about app permissions and nope. that, you know, cause people will just download stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, let me grab this app. And they never go look at the app permissions that it gets access to all of your photos, yep. all of your phone log, your yep. uh, internet. Uh, IP, all of it on different apps. You know, like they were saying that some of these at the time when I first discovered this a few years ago, that the flashlight apps that people would install on their phone because of that light on the back so they could use their flashlight. Yeah, I have one. A lot of those were spying apps because they're like, why does a flashlight app need access to all this other stuff? And they were like, guys, these people are spying on you and you, you know, you don't know who created that app and what's really going on. And that's when I started paying attention. But look, look how many years they were doing that. We weren't even thinking about it. Yep. Even if you remove the app, for example, th- you know, like, for example, uh, 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 it's a, for example, f- Facebook is in bed with the government, which I believe they are. Um, you know, th- 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 when you, when you saw the app, they, they, okay, okay. They associate with the person and all your details, but they also said the phone has a unique ID. So even if you mm-hmm. remove the app, they now know who owns it and um, they can track you from there from that point on. I mean, it's, pretty insidious right and then now the only way for them not to track you would be to pull the battery out of your phone but guess what now you can't pull the batteries <laughs> out of these phones yep so you'd have to get what's called like yep. a faraday cage um some people say you can just wrap it in aluminum foil and that'll do it i don't know ben is our tech i'm gonna say guru because a wizard is a witch and we're not gonna we're not going to label him a wizard. So how about a guru <laughs> uh, for the technology? And 
I don't know, Ben. Is that true? Can you just wrap them in, in aluminum foil to block the signal? Well, yeah, but the, well, yes, but it's effectively useless. You can't use it. It's, just a, it's basically a brick at that point. You can't if nothing if no signals could come in, uh, nothing's going out either. So, yeah, but um, you know, there are people who are um, what am I saying sensitive a lot to these the radiation that emits from the phone, and mm -hmm. I was wondering if that helped block it. You know, maybe something they could use if they go to sleep at night and they're having trouble sleeping. Maybe that'll help them sleep just to wrap their phone in. Uh, oh, yeah. Hey, I, I would imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, they do have these things you can buy for like 10 or 15 bucks that uh, are what are called Faraday case cases. But if you if you want to do it on the cheap tip, you can wrap them in aluminum foil. Um the other is, I think we had talked about this briefly one time about how they had tricked everybody because they knew the internet was coming, Wi-Fi was coming. So you remember when there was that big push in the 70s <laughs> to get the lead paint out of the the paint mm -hmm. uh, because they claimed that children were eating the lead paint and were going to die. <laughs> so they had the lead paint removed because they knew it would have blocked the Wi-Fi signal and the signals. Yeah. Yeah. Never thought <laughs> so, about that. Um, well, I think this is a good time way to segue into Sister Angel's topic for this evening. I mean, after all, with all this weird stuff going on, uh, we know the moon has a unusual effect on some people, and they certainly use it in a lot of occultic uh, practices and oh, go wait. by the tides and the cycles of the moon. So, Sister uh, Angel, you wanted to talk about moon phases, so let's go ahead and shift well, into that topic. All right, so basically, and it's really more, it's more Jason that uh, hopefully we'll we'll be talking about it. But I wanted to just to make everybody aware that listens to this who hasn't uh, maybe heard us mention it before on uh, Fellowship Friday. Um, Jason, uh, maybe like a year ago now, he pointed out to me one time when we were in chat that um, the moon phases, which this is something I had been really racking my brain about trying to figure out what the moon phases were all about. Um, knowing that God created everything and including yeah. the moon phases, I want to know what they symbolize because I knew it had to be important. Mm -hmm. And, Jay and I, I, I asked that question or I said something about it in the chat and Jason immediately responded. He said, it's, it's like the, uh, the tombstone rolling like over and away from Christ's tomb. Yep. And it hit me like a ton of bricks and it clicked right then. I knew that that's true. Mm. The Holy Spirit uh, bared witness with that. And I have never heard anybody else make this observation, but I wanted to to hear Jason tell me like how how he came up with that. With yeah, I've never heard you tell us about that. Oh when sure, when you had that realization. Sure. So it it was around that same time, Angel, that you brought it up, and and it might have been a couple of weeks before that that I I love looking at the moon. I lo I love all of nature. Uh, in Psalms, it says, and I forget which chapter it is, but the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Um, there's a lot in that scripture, uh, a lot of things being said in there. Um, and I just, I, I really am a nature person. I, I love seeing God's handiwork and I love the sky. I'm not like, I don't like to study the stars or anything. Um, but actually, uh, I, I just like the moon. I like the phases of the moon and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not scientific about it, but it's just something I enjoy. And I, I kept looking at the, at the moon phases and I thought, it, you know, that looks to me like it's the opening of a tune with the round stone being rolled, the different phases over it. Um, mm -hmm. like, like, uh, a full moon would be, you know, no stone. And then, you know, slowly the different phases of the moon looks like, okay, there's a little stone, rolled over the, the spot, like there's light coming through, like it could be uh, the stone where Christ was, the, or the, the, uh, the tomb where Christ was laid, uh, and the different phase of the moon, okay, now it's opening and it's fully open when it's full, and then the different phase of the moon are the stone being rolled over, and then it's open again. Um, and it was just curious to me, and I, I tried to find any information where anyone had had thought that, or me, or or, and, and this isn't about like oh, I made this observation. I don't. I, I'm not like that. Those that know me, I, I I'm, <laughs> I, no. I am as humble as I can possibly be by His Holy Spirit that makes me like that because I haven't always been like that to be honest. So, uh, but I, I, you know, I tried to do quote unquote. I'm doing air quotes. Nobody can see right now. I tried to do research 
on it to 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 try to get information of it, and I couldn't find anything. And I, uh, I Angel, you did a, a broadcast about uh, about this, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, and uh, you're probably more of a research person than I am. That's just a guess. Could be an assumption on my part. But did you? Were you able to find anyone else talking about no. this or, or any information? No. Not at all. Um, all I know is that if you, and I can't remember it right offhand, but I know that if you look at the, uh, the phases of the moon in alignment with um, the biblical feast day, um, I, I remember uh, it absolutely, <laughs> I can't remember how, but maybe somebody who knows more about this, it completely like uh, was like a slam dunk proof. Yeah. Uh, of what you're saying, because it was something about the whatever the face of the moon was on Passover. Um, it was either the tomb. Oh, it's like the new moon, right? Yeah. So I think it is. So, but basically, that totally um, confirmed it in my spirit that yeah. that's what it's supposed to represent, and that would be why they were based around why it's a lunar cycle too. I think so. Yeah. In, in now, the Bible. <laughs> Now, uh, Stacy in Arizona just just put an emoji on there, and if you look at it, and with this idea in mind, you in the chat, you can you can. I mean, it, it's kind of tilted a little bit, but you can see it. I mean, if you if you if you're thinking about it in your mind that, that it's possible, that it's a sign in the heavens, like his word says. Um, and to back that up, also back in the fifties, and I forget the guy's name, but he did. Uh, it's like a two hour speech that he did somewhere. I'm not sure where he did it, but he was saying that all these other, uh, all these other cultures that have, uh, named all the, you know, like Pleiades and they named all, you know, like things look like certain things from Greek mythology and all that. They actually stole from, uh, from God. Um, because he placed all the stars in the heavens. He placed them in a certain way to, to look like certain things. And each one of the star uh, clusters tells the story of the gospel. And it would take too long for me to go into it. And I, I'm not that uh, learned enough to explain it. Um, but I'll try to find the link for that if anyone's interested. Uh, it was fascinating. Uh, and he used scripture and went through each of the major ones the, the major star clusters that uh, have been usurped uh, by other uh, cultures and, and given names to tell the story of the gospel shown in the stars. To me, that's fascinating. So why wouldn't the moon also be included in that? If there's evidence that the stars declare, that the heavens declare the glory of God and his firmament showeth his handiwork, if that's true, and we believe it is, as Bible believers, we, we believe it is, we know that God is way more complex than anyone can ever realize. We'll know that when we see him and we have eternity to learn more of him when we're with him. Mm. We'll know that. But I, I, I believe that uh, this uh, Satan has blinded the minds of the people in this world, and that include, includes uh, things about uh, cosmology. It includes things about astronomy. All of that stuff has been obscured, and I can go into that for a long time. Uh, but I believe that in nature, God tells his own story. And and back uh, before the advent of the Internet and back before they started messing around with things, these stories were handed down from generation to generation of what the actual meaning of the constellations meant and that it did tell a story. People used to know about this stuff. Um, even in Hebrew culture, they knew about it. Uh, uh, Crypts, are you referring to the book called The Gospel in the Stars? Uh, well, do you know what the author's name of that was? Uh, Joseph A. Seiss? Or no, Seiss? I have to look. I don't want to confirm that without, okay. without looking at it, but I will look it up and I'll get back to you on that. Um, but yeah, if you know a book where they talk about that, have you read that by chance? I've seen like people. I've seen like a video on someone talking about what the 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 overall like review of the book essentially. Yes, oh, and it was very interesting. Yeah, you're right. They've hijacked uh, pagan paganism has hijacked paganism. all those things, and I believe, like you said, uh, they pour forth speech, and those mm -hmm. constellations are actually uh, depictions of of the Bible and the star is Ab the gospels and stars. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I I have I, I believe that 100. percent um, and I just ran across this last week, this uh, this talk 
I, like I, it, it's kind of grainy, like the sound cuts out sometimes. I know it's from the from probably the 50s or something, um, but I just found it and I did save it. So I'll be able to access for anyone that's interested and I can uh, uh, get that link to you guys. If you're uh, also here. too, I just you know, in case anyone might not have, uh, this occurred to me a long time ago before the tomb, uh, the the correlation of the phases of the moon with the with Christ's tomb, I've often thought, you know, the sun was a kind of a type for the father who's a consuming fire that no one can look upon. Mm -hmm. Whereas the, whereas the moon, which reflects the sun's light. I don't know if that's true or not anymore, but it potentially uh, the sun, the moon reflects the father's light. Um, so he, he reflects the father's glory. The, the moon is taking a looks like it's taken a hell of a beating, uh, you know, from the craters and stuff like that. It's kind of a picture of Christ's, uh, Christ's uh, scourging. Um, the you know the moon shines bright in a dark place. Um, also, to the um, the moon is referred to as a lesser light. Um, and you know, just like Christ uh, in his incarnation set aside his glory, and um, during his first coming, he was made a little lower than the angels. So I see a lot of parallels to Christ and the moon. Um, I don't I don't want to take it too far, but I think I think those are uh, I think those are legitimate. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Absolutely that's what the things I was trying to figure flesh out myself was um, what the sun represented after I, after I, uh, you know, realized what the moon represented. So yeah, that's helpful. Um, uh, that's something I was wanting other people to to um, to figure out this thing about the moon so they could so they could flesh out the <laughs> the theory a little bit more. That's why I, I contacted uh, Will from the Truth is Stranger Than Fiction actually. Um, he was one of the people that I, I talked to about this and he'd never heard of it either. Uh, uh, but I wanted him to, to get his brain going so he could, <laughs> he could help me fill in the blanks. Cause I knew, uh, I knew I had a lot of blanks still once I realized, uh, but it was such a great thing when Jason said that to me, I, I felt so much relief because it had really been bothering me <laughs> trying to figure out what the moon was all about, what great the point job. of the moon was. Uh, now, well, I was reading some of the comments in the chat, so I may have been a little bit distracted when you guys were expounding on this about the moon uh, representing. Uh, you said the, the tomb of Christ or the the tomb. Yeah, of the stone. The stone being rolled over the like the, the mouth. like with an eclipse. Is that what you're saying? Right. Okay. Well, he, well, in general, does, in general. Like, right. Right. Well, if you well, yeah, but if you, general, but if you, yeah, I was gonna like, say if you look at when an eclipse happens. Mm -hmm. it, it does look like there, there's light breaking forth from the from the dark yes yeah, yes that, the that. eclipse is definitely a very like um it's almost like a a a, a, a very poignant uh like example of it but I, but when i was looking at even just the phases of the moon mm -hmm. uh in general if you think of it being it's almost like the inverse or something so so basically um it would be like the light christ could see from inside the tomb and oh, okay. the, the 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 phases so like when the moon is full it would be like the tombstone's not there and then uh as it's rolling over and then away that would be like the waxing and waning moon if mm -hmm. you look at it that way and then i think mm -hmm. the eclipse would be like the other way around mm. is that okay all right i, I, I got the, you like like um, when they rolled him in and then like when they rolled the tombstone over to like put him in there uh, when mm -hmm. he, you know, died. And then um, when he uh, resurrected the tombstone rolling away uh, as mm. he exited. So I think that's, I think that's what it's about, but. Fascinating. Okay. It is. It's amazing. I had never well, thought about that. That's very that's interesting. All Jason. <laughs> No, it's all God. Thank you, thank you, Angel. Well, yes, yes, that, absolutely. That is a, all God. If 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 that's true, I mean, if 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 that was from the Holy Spirit, and you you say it confirmed it for you, yeah, I, I'm not going to doubt that at all. So I I praise God that that He ever uh, gave that to me in the first place. Yeah, who knows? It might be a revelation that's been lost uh, since we haven't been able to find anybody that talks about it. Might be something mm. that, like you said, the world used to know, and um, did, he's bringing I, it to mind again. I did find that link, and I tried to put it, but I'm not a um, uh, in the chat. But it, uh, I'm not a uh, what, what do you call it, moderator? I don't know if um, you can allow that 
uh, Ben, if you can see that I tried to put it in there for it won't. No, uh, Lisa could make you a moderator, I believe. Oh, yeah, that's not a problem. Are uh, you in the chat now? Yeah, uh, yeah. True Story Live. It, it, I, I always switch it. If I come on a broadcast, I use my own thing. I don't know why I do that. I think originally I had a reason for it, but I don't. Um, but I did find it, it and this is this is absolutely fascinating. I, if you have any interest in that and, and what the it's called, uh, the Bible and the stars and constellation of the gospel and the stars. And uh, the guy is a Bertrand uh, Comparet, Bertrand Comparet. That sounds familiar. And it it is just wonderful. He uses he uses scripture. He's not just you know blowing smoke out there. Uh, it, and it is two hours long, just over two hours long. Mm -hmm. Okay, you are now a moderator. Okay, no charge, no uh, charge this time. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> there you go. All right, so guys, if anyone has any interest in doing, thank you. Uh, Mm -hmm, Band, no problem. Band, Hendrix says band Crips. Thanks. Thanks, Hendrix. <laughs> uh, guys, I'm going to have to head out, uh, un un unfortunately. Um, oh, okay. I, I just am so grateful that you guys let me come on as a guest tonight. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I hope oh, to yeah. be able to come back again at some point. I hope I've ingratiated myself to you guys. <laughs> and, oh, and, uh, I think so. Yeah. Thank, thank you so everybody. much for joining us this evening brother Cripps and you sure had a lot to expound on and we do appreciate it mm, thank you so much all right um you guys uh, enjoy the rest of it i'll have to come back and listen to to i i wanted to hear the other topic on the fasting i'm sure you'll get to that here shortly but yeah, yeah. i love you guys and i appreciate you and love i appreciate you. everyone in the chat and uh, I, tell I'll, jen we said hi i will yeah she's not feeling well she just sent me a message and asked me when i was going to be done so um, I'm going to do my fiance duties and uh, see if I can uh, help her out with anything. So, okay, thank you. Right. Thank you so Good much. Night. Good night. Good night, Jen. Good night. Hope Jen feels better. Thank you yes. so much. Good night, guys. And we'll pray for Jen too, guys, uh, that yes. she feels better and uh, whatever's bothering her, that she be healed in Jesus' name. We're going to pray for her too, uh, as well as Vadim. Uh, yeah, Happy so day. I think this is a good time now the brother. Crips is left. We can shift to the the fasting topic. Um, I had wanted to talk about how we can use fasting and prayer in spiritual warfare, and you know you can see that in the scripture when Jesus talked about a particular spirit that did not go out except but by prayer and fasting. So I'm curious before we begin, before I talk about it, um, let me start with Sister Angel. Sister Angel. Do you have any experience with uh, prayer no, and fasting? I have not been able to yet. I, I, I have, well, ever since I've been saved, I've literally been pregnant or breastfeeding, and I just haven't wanted to attempt fasting and during those circumstances, because when you're pregnant, mm -hmm. uh, that's, well, that's, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's a good idea to fast while pregnant. I'm sure it can be done, but it just seemed like a bad time for me to start. Right. And then breastfeeding. No, it's not advisable, um, yeah. The supply or milk supply really dwindles drastically from when I when I have just uh, not eaten, you know, for sometimes I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll accidentally fast <laughs> during the day uh, just because I, sometimes I get sleepy if I eat. Well, usually mm -hmm. I get sleepy if I eat. So um, I'll, I'll basically not eat all day if I have something like a lot of stuff to get done. And um, uh, the, your milk supply, though, really takes a hit when you do that. So uh, I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to being able to start uh trying to fast uh here within the next uh year or so um or six months to a year uh with the baby uh, getting bare so um yeah that but so no i'm all ears basically i'm a, I'm a complete uh totally inexperienced with this so love to hear everybody else's all right. experience well brother ben do you have any experience with fasting well about 10 years ago when i started getting serious about uh well, when I started getting serious about trying to understand God and who he was, um, and so I don't think I was necessarily saved back then because uh, I didn't really know the true gospel uh, or was conflicted. Um, but anyways, I, I back then, I in an effort to get closer to God, I thought that was something I should do. So I did it for like three days. And, mm -hmm. um, and so it, and 
and so I, I didn't really see a whole lot of benefit personally, but um, I didn't find it particularly difficult. And I thought that was interesting uh, that it wasn't very hard at all to do it. In fact, I found it energizing. Um, and then today I'm interested in, uh, I am interested in it now and I haven't really done it much. I, I, I tend to, I, it's not unlikely for me to have like one meal a day, even now. So um, at that, in that sense, it's kind of like fasting, but not really. Um, but one thing I'd be curious to have you hit on is uh, I, I lift a lot of weights now. And um, one thing I would be concerned about fasting is, is starving my muscles of protein. So like I'd be working out and not getting any gain or even loss. I, I'd be a little bit concerned about that. But again, if it's just a wonder, you know, and it sounds selfish. I don't mean to sound like that in that, but sense. But I'm curious to say what hear what you say in terms of fasting. Is it you know is it more of a lifestyle thing or a um, what purpose do you um, employ it for? That's what I'd be interested in hearing. Hmm. Well, let's see. The first time that I fasted, I was a teenager, and uh, it was a, a church thing. We were fasting and praying, I do not recall over what particular issue the church was addressing at the time. And uh, that's why I kind of laughed because I heard a presentation by, uh, I believe he's a doctor, Jason Fung. Um, yeah, because he, he deals with nephrology uh, and uh, people who deal with um, kidney issues as well as diabetes. And he has a lot of good lectures here on YouTube. And let's see, he's written several books. I'll pull a couple of them up here in a little bit for uh, Ben to display for everyone if they're interested. Um, but when we started doing it, it was, as I recall, the best I recall, it was probably about 15 or 16. And I think it was just a three-day fast that the church engaged in. And then that got me started. And once I realized I could do it, then I really started exploring more avenues with fasting, uh, but they weren't necessarily for spiritual reasons. So it was more health-based reasons. And my dad had introduced me to a book. They did a reprint on it, thankfully, because it had been out of print for a number of years. Let's see, it's by Dr. Alan Cott, MD. Uh, fasting the ultimate diet. And in that book, he covers basically how to get started, what fasting does to the body, um, what you can expect, the various types of fasting. Uh, he doesn't cover dry fasting to the best of my remembrance. It's been years since I've read this particular book, but it was a good read. Um, and this was, let's see, this, I think this republish was in 1996. Uh, it's available on Amazon and other places. But uh, let's see, Brother Ben, I'll go ahead and give you a link. I am not affiliated with Amazon. I don't have anything to do with it. If you click through and uh, make a purchase, I, I don't get not one penny. So <laughs> I'm just uh, putting it for Ben to display the picture there. So people can see what it looks like. There are other copies available. I'm not sure if you could find it in PDF form anywhere on the internet. That's a possibility. But um, it was a very good book. And he also did another one called Fasting as a Way of Life. He was one of the first people. I'm not saying he was the first person. But he was one of the first people that I heard talk about intermittent fasting. And he was a doctor, which was unusual for MDs to be advocating fasting. And one of the points that he made in fasting the ultimate diet was that fasting is by no means starving. Uh, a lot of people are under that impression. Well, you're starving yourself. But when you learn, that's why you should look into it, learn the physiology behind it. You'll understand if you have any fat on your body, fasting is not starving because what it's going to do is tap into those fat stores. And uh, you'll be losing that fat. The body is going to be using that fat for fuel during the time that you're fasting. Now, in his books, he's advocating, oh, in fact, I just saw it here on the cover of the Fasting the Ultimate Diet. That's what he has right under there. 
it says fasting is not starving. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a lot of people are concerned about that. But if you he points out in the book, and again, this is an MD that wrote this book. He says that any otherwise healthy person, meaning you're not on any medications and you're not, you know, ill, uh, seriously ill with some serious health condition, any otherwise healthy person can fast. And he does talk about in the book some of the um, illnesses that fasting might actually help. There are a few, a handful of uh, illnesses where fasting would be what's called contraindicative, which means it's not advisable. It would actually do more harm than good. Uh, it's a very short list. I think he has those in the book. If not, they're very easy to find out. You can do a search on when fasting is, is not advised for certain health conditions. But uh, there are a number of people, as well as, as I was recommending, Dr. Jason Fung, who has done numerous lectures here on YouTube about fasting, talks about those type of things. So any of his lectures, if you'd like to learn more about fasting, uh, he talks about how people have reversed serious health conditions, one of which he deals with is diabetes and how fasting works to help those people. Um, he has a book. Let me see if I can pull it up here. Uh, that uh, at first uh, woke me up to him. Let's see. Yeah, there's one called The Complete Guide to Fasting. And it's by Jason Fung and Jimmy Moore. And then there's another one. Let's see here. The one that, uh, yeah, The Obesity Code. Now, this helps a lot of people who are dealing with uh, insulin resistance and uh, struggling to get their their weight loss going. And then another one that he wrote called the Diabetes, the Diabetes Code. So, you know, that's enough to get you guys started. You look up Dr. Jason Fung, F-U-N-G. You'll find tons of free lectures he has right here on YouTube just a wealth of information that talks about the physiology of what happens in the body. And one of the points that he makes that I love is that he says, it doesn't matter if you're rich, you can fast. If you're poor, you can fast. If you're, you know, tall, you can fast. If you're thin, you can fast. He talks about, you know, all these different things. If you don't have any money at all, you can still fast. So, uh, and and really fasting is a way to save money. I remember hearing uh, one woman talk about her fasting first time her, she uh, dealt with or uh, began to explore fasting was when she was in college. And it was actually a way for her to not only save money, but she didn't have a lot of time with all of the studies. And she figured out that the time it took for her to go somewhere to get the meal, then to eat the meal, then to travel back, she could save that time and use it for studying. <laughs> and so she would skip meals and eat every other day to uh, save money. And, and she also uh, saved that time to use for studying and managed to lose some weight as well. So it was like a, a trifecta and win for her. So, uh, But fasting in the Bible, this is what shocked me, when I first learned, uh, started learning, I had been fasting many years. I have done 40-day water fast. I've done 25-day water fast a couple of times, numerous three-day, numerous 10-day. Uh, I've tried juice fasting for, I think the longest period I did the juice fasting was just over 30 days. I've done uh, dry fasting, which is what I've been experimenting recently in the last six months to a year, roughly. Um, and what my experience has been with that. Now, what got me started on dry fasting, I first started hearing about dry fasting when we started hearing a lot about Ramadan and Islam because of all the wars and stuff that were happening. People started learning more about Islam as a result. And then we started learning about Ramadan, which is when they would fast from sunrise to sunset, but it's a dry fast. They don't
Hello, Lisa. We lost you. Angel, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can't hear her either. No, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, waiting for her to... I'm hoping she can hear us. I'll try texting her. Okay. Whew. Yeah, man, I can't even imagine the dry fast. That's just... Oh, <laughs> what I, I know, that's that. I mean, extreme. I, that should be That should be a demonstration of supernatural power right there. <laughs> right. For anybody that has any doubt, I mean, if you can actually dry fast for that length of time and not only survive, but be just fine. I mean, wow, that's a sign and wonder if you ask me. Right. <laughs> oh. I'm going to, well, I guess I won't text her if you're texting her. One concern I have about fasting, um, like you mentioned, the studying. I mean, I, I would be a little concerned about what that does to your brain. Um, you know, yeah. I, although I think there's a principle in in uh, uh, a known principle. I'm not sure if it has a name, but uh, where your body will always um, allocate resources to the thing that needs it most. So, like, yep. Um, you know, if if you're deprived of vitamins, um, you know, it'll let some lesser, uh, uh, less critical. Um, function in your body body uh it'll, it'll leave kind of let those go to the wayside um yeah. and focus on areas that are more important like you know for example it might prefer your uh your bones over your hair and nails for example um oh, yeah. there's, a, there's a principle for that I forgot what it's called but um i would imagine during probably pregnancy some, uh, too yeah 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 the baby will never starve i know because when i uh with my first child at my well, my first job was with my ex fiance, so um, uh, and that was a very bad relationship. And I was, I, I was starving like that whole pregnancy, pretty much. Um, uh, he was like a narcissistic, abusive type guy, like not physically abusive, but anyway, he was uh, a chef. And so, uh, I guess the way to uh, make make sure I like low key didn't feel valuable was to 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 not actually make sure we had food, even though he ran a kitchen. Um, and I was. Uh, I was 30 pounds lighter uh, when I had the baby, <laughs> when I had my daughter, Lucy, uh, than when I got pregnant. And, um, and she was a healthy weight, but uh, the my body t uh, just took uh, from everywhere else that it could, um, you know, and plus you're burning quite a bit of cal extra calories while you're pregnant, uh, forming the baby and everything. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I've definitely, I've definitely seen that. I know that if you have, you know, fat stores, you know, it makes sense that you wouldn't even, wouldn't even de get dehydrated, but it seems like that would run out quickly, you know? Um, uh, uh, it seems like, you know, it, you would go through more water, uh, in like a week period than, somebody would have spare if they were say 15 pounds overweight, you know, assuming you drink more than 15 pounds. Right. Wow. But yeah, again, I, I think it's uh, one thing I was kind of surprised by, I recently lost like 35 pounds. And, and one thing I was kind of surprised by is that I didn't, I didn't have a lot of fat like on, on my external, but I think a lot of my fat was like internal, you know, around my mm -hmm. organs and stuff because uh, I didn't have like a lot of like loose skin or anything like that. It was just, but I lost a lot of weight. So um, yeah, I think yeah. a lot of people would be surprised at uh, the amount of fat they could <laughs> you could store internally, you know? Yeah, because I, when I, you know, like I was talking about when I was pregnant, I, I wasn't, I mean, I was probably like, it's like a size eight when I got pregnant. Um, and, you know, I went down to about a size four. Uh, and I, 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 you know, but I wasn't, um, I, I didn't, you know, wouldn't have thought I would have 30 pounds to lose. But, you know, 30, it, it, fat doesn't weigh very much. But, you know, also... I guess the body attacks the muscle too, you know, when you're, when right. you're uh, right. going without, but uh, I, you know, I wonder, I wonder if there's a difference between fasting and just like starving. Like if your body, if you actually don't give your body food or water, if a different process goes, goes on, then, then if you're just not eating enough, you see what I'm saying? Right. Um, that could be right. part of why. My understanding is that you can't go like, well, again, this is coming from mainstream medical sources, but it's, so I don't trust it. <laughs> uh, but mm -hmm. I, my understanding is that it's generally accepted that you can't go more than three days without liquid taking some kind yeah. of, you know, yeah. Yeah. I'll, you know, I'll 
Joel, uh, he uh, only recently started drinking water. I couldn't believe it. Like ever since I've known him, um, he uh, would not ever, and I've known him for like, you know, 13 years. Uh, he wouldn't drink anything. He didn't drink water. So he would only like, drink. he drinks a lot of milk, but he didn't drink any water. And, you know, um, now I've got him drinking distilled water and, uh, you know, he's, you know, well, he has to have a flavor shot in it, but um he went all that time and he doesn't have, you know, he's hardly got any illness at all. Like he's very, he barely ever gets sick. He's, you know, doesn't have. How about kidney stones? Have like big soda and milk. And that was, no, nope. he doesn't have problem with like kidney stones or anything. No, nope. no, it's amazing. I don't understand. Yeah. yeah. He hasn't had like any, he's barely, you know, he gets like maybe the flu sometimes. Right. But, uh, he's got epilepsy though. Uh, which, you know, uh, we're not even sure if he still has it because I'm pretty sure that the modern medical understanding of what epilepsy is is totally bogus because they'll, you know, people will have seizures and they'll diagnose them with epilepsy and make them take this drug for life. But my dad had seizures when he was younger. He was, uh, you know, he had a drug problem, but uh, he, you know, technically was an epileptic and he's never been on the medication, but he doesn't have seizures anymore. But, you know, Joel... Joel still takes the Lantern, even though he hasn't had a seizure in, you know, a decade. Uh, but they tell you, but that's his only real health problem is that. And I don't know if it even exists anymore. So yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. I, he's pretty sturdy, <laughs> I guess, but uh, uh, you know, because I try to take a lot better care of uh, my health uh, and he, he, he just has a lot less problems than me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I, <laughs> especially like with my, my gums, uh, Lisa, have you heard from her? No, no. I'm I'm wondering if like her power went out or. Uh, oh man. I'm thinking something yeah. like. Um. Oh, I did want to say the uh, vitamin uh, K2. I think is or the you know the K2. It's definitely helping with uh with my gums. I think because although I don't know if it has yet. The uh, ginger vitamin. I know that I haven't had uh, got, uh, I for a while there. I was having like so pain, like so much pain, off and on. Like it was absolutely unbearable for my gums. And I think they were just like dying. I, I, I from a vitamin deficiency, or, you know, and like they couldn't get you know, they couldn't get the vitamin from anything I was eating. So um, my gums were just it, it, it was it was some days. I, and uh, since I've been taking a. Uh, uh, K2, I haven't had any gum pain at all. And you know how uh, much you're taking? It's also reversing. Do you um, have any idea how much you're taking a day? I was going to talk to you about that. Yeah. I don't actually know how much I, I, I've been taking like two pills a day, but I need to look at what the, what the, uh, what the dose is um, on the, on the bottle. It's just like the Walmart stuff. I need to up my game and get like the better stuff. But um even that stuff has really helped. Let me see if I can sneak in here. Oh, actually, uh, I, I've actually posted. Like, I don't know if you can see the screen right now, but I actually posted. Um, I did some research on like the cheapest, like the best value, uh, and I I was gonna show this last time when we originally talked about. It, I was gonna show it on the screen, but I forgot to. Uh, so right now I'm on on the video. I'm showing two two brands I found that were like high quality and low cost um, with my research. So <laughs> yeah, because I'm I'm only taking 200 micrograms. That's right pretty now, good. Looks That's like, good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, and then, you know, I take vitamin D3 with it and I've been taking that natto kinase, uh, not really sure, uh, what all it, um, you know, aside from blood clots, uh, what, what all it'll do, but, uh, I was hoping it might also have some of the, uh, I don't know that natto kinase is just like an enzyme, but it says it's an extract from natto. So I wonder if it has, um, vitamin K2 in it. No, that was an expensive brand, but I'll definitely check out those brands you were talking about because it's always it's one thing to go out and you find like the best vitamin brand you can you can find that's like you know sixty dollars a bottle, but to keep that up to keep you know right. taking it all the time, it's you know it becomes one of those investments and you eventually let it go by the wayside. So I think it's better to get something sustainable that you know you'll you'll continue to buy. Right. Um, I, okay, uh, my, uh, my two-year-old is screaming yep. and crying, so I'm going to mute real quick so I can get her a cup. And uh, uh, sorry, I don't mean to leave you alone here, but uh, there right. she is. So here, one sec. I'll, I'm right All here. Right. I just want to mute. Yep.
I was gonna say something and I forgot who it was. <laughs> Oh, I was going to say, um, I think one of the reasons that uh, – so K2 has always, has always been in our, in our diet. And um, I think one of the reasons that um, it, it, it typically came from grass-fed animals and people ate – drink milk, which was which rich in K2. Um, but also, too, I recently learned this, is that ancient in the ancient world, uh, people would uh, – because we had one of the pr primary means of food preservation was to ferment it. And uh, today, one of the most – probably the most natural occurring source of K2 that I'm aware of um, is a soybean in uh, the way soybeans are prepared in J Japan. It's called natto and it's a fermented soybean. And, uh, but in the ancient world, they fermented everything. They fermented meats, they fermented uh, vegetables. And uh, so I guess it's just rich. It, so I, I tend to think that, um, you know, a ancient man, one of the reasons they lived uh, as long as they did um without modern medicine is because they knew of, of these uh, essential vitamins, or at least they, even if they didn't know about them, they were getting them. So. Right. Right. Yeah. Fermented foods are uh, uh, huge. I know I was looking at uh, things like soy sauce and all that. And I was thinking, well, you know, is that bad to eat because of, you know, certain effects, especially for men eating lots of soy, but I guess when it's fermented, it's different. And uh, that's one of the things that we're planting this, um, this garden right here on our property, which is one of the reasons I've been uh, kind of indisposed the past week, uh, because, you know, you know, you have to preserve a lot of food if you're going to plant a garden and, you know, you can't eat it all at once. And so I'm, I'm you know, a part of that is I want to uh, uh, make a lot of fermented foods. Um, luckily, my kids, well, at least two of them, they love, you know, uh, pickled foods. Uh, like they love pickled beets, pickles, uh, pickled anything, uh, they, <laughs> which, uh, you know, it, I, I do too. I find when, it, strangely, when, when women are pregnant, they start craving pickled foods. I know mm. I did. And, and yeah. I think it might be because of that fermentation effect the, of the vitamins and everything. I think that might be what, uh, one of the reasons, um, because, you know, it's, it's clear that I think God made it so that when, especially when you're pregnant, you crave the foods that you are, you know, that contain the things you're deficient in. Right. Um, and uh, like for me, I have a problem where I get anemic pretty easily. And uh, even just since being pregnant, it still hasn't, it hasn't gone away. I, I was craving red meat so bad. And now it's like really for dinner, all I want to eat is something to do with, is with beef. Uh, uh, I pregnancy really messed up my appetite because I, I still have that. I operate around craving still, but, um, yeah, I, uh, I, my, my little girls two at least two of them, my, my four-year-old is impossible. She's like, absolutely the worst diet ever, but she will not eat if she doesn't want it and she will starve. I've tried not feeding her. I've tried just like, you know, if she, if she won't eat what I give her, I've tried just not letting her, uh, not giving her something else and she won't eat. She just still won't eat. She'll go two days barely eating anything. Uh, uh, and so get totally delirious because she won't eat what she, you know, something she doesn't want. But then my, um, my two year old and my six year old, they love, you know, how the healthiest foods is crazy. Like they just naturally love uh, vegetables, raw vegetables, which is insane to me. Um, <laughs> that's like their favorite thing to eat. So, uh, you know, I got uh, really blessed on that end, but uh, so I don't know. I mean, should we try to? Yeah, I was, I was gonna say. Call? Yeah, I was. I was thinking the same thing. I'm getting a little worried about her because uh, I'm not going to get text. I mean, if her power went out, her phone should still work. Um, yeah, yeah, that's why I'm wondering if maybe, uh, maybe I should uh, drop off real quick and call her. Or I, I don't think. I yeah, I think I'm just gonna. I'm gonna call. stop this. Uh, I'm gonna stop the stream and. Okay. Um, yeah, and, sounds good. Yeah, we'll we'll talk behind the scenes. So thanks for everyone for joining us. Uh, we love you all. Yeah, sorry about and, that. And uh, we'll look forward to meeting with you again next week. Anything you want to final say, Angel? Or?